And the roll call is Janet Pesatoro. James Tell. Uh, Brian Derby. Maria Barman. And Carol Gumbay. Okay. Um, so first up, we have rising tides, but nobody's here. Uh, well, um, Rick Merrickin called today and said he had a conflict and asked if it was okay that he didn't come. He, uh, he did send um, revised plans. So if you want to open that, I can you know give you the information that he submitted and oh okay. I so think we kind of had come to a conclusion at the last meeting that we what we wanted to get from him. Yeah. Oh, am I supposed to read a public hearing thing? Because I don't think I've got. Uh, no, because that's a oh, continued uh, hearing. Okay, so we're continuing then. Yeah. Rising tides, uh, 256 West Berlin Road. Um, so what's the update? Okay, so the update is that um, that Rick wasn't able to come tonight, but he did submit which I just received today, um, revised plans. And the changes to the plan, and if you guys want to see things as we put them up on the table, you, know, you can come up then. Yeah. Actually, um, since it's light, we could maybe even actually explain things. <laughs> the yeah. schedule is light, we could explain things. Um, this was a house in a small lot, um, well, a well, lot of the lot had wetland, was given wetland resource area. And in order to make a, a substantial, substantial yard, um, they had to kind of encroach on the resource area. So we were, when you see that, you look for, when somebody wants to do something within a resource area or that has impact, you want to um, um, try to find a way to either not impact, you know, totally avoid the wetland, or to reduce the impact, meaning maybe shrink the size of the yard, shift the, um, the orientation of the house, so the yard doesn't stretch into the wetland, for example. And so does anybody know the difference between the resource area? No, probably and the not. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, actually, this is a uh, result of a uh, uh, town ordinance that, that Bolton has. And normally, we, we look for activity within the, uh, according to the Wetlands Protection Act, within the wetlands. But Bolton has a uh, what, what is that specific, uh, uh, bylaw uh, that restricts development within 70, 75 feet? Well, well it's, the, re the resource area extends um, 75 feet from the edge of the wetland, but the wetland buyer definition is 25 feet from the vegetated wetland and from the bank or from any other wetland except for a riverfront. So it's effectively, so it's total, so it's effectively 100 feet. Yeah. Right. So when we're talking about the resource area, we're talking about coming back from the wetland itself. Is it a buffer zone? Under the Wetlands Protection Act, it's the buffer zone. Under the town bylaw, it's considered an adjacent upland resource area. Okay. So it's, it's, or, more, or, it's more restricted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You'll hear that term too. Yeah, we, yeah, we call it the aura, which works so pretty well. Sounds <laughs> 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 mysterious. So, yeah, so you try to avoid the impact. If you can't avoid it, you reduce it. If you can't reduce it, then you to, um, then we may have to mitigate for it, meaning give something back that would be of comparable wetland benefit or habitat benefit, um, you know, comparable to what they're taking away by doing their project. So in this particular case, um, they talked about mitigating what, by putting a conservation restriction on um, 4 .8 part 8 of the rest points. of the property. So meaning which, yeah. yes, a conservation restriction helps protect it in perpetuity. Oh, so I don't want to go into detail on that. So, but why don't you tell us what they're, you said they uh, submitted. I can, I just want to point out real quick. So this is, okay. no, which is fine. That, that um, 100 feet basically for the ore area, that's this thick dotted line is the extent of the resource area. So they had a little bit of a backyard coming out to about here, but there was no, like you couldn't go around in the driveway. It was right up to the corner of the house. So they were asking to open that basically up and push it back so they'd have some yard there and then just go into the regular backyard there. I think that's an existing rock wall. No, no, that's no, no that's, actually, that's, 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 the, that, that's how he showed the waddles, the straw, the yeah, yeah. control. And it looked like a wall. Because I was trying to think, because it, it, there was some yard area back here, right? Because I think, is this the line? Yeah, that's, I knew they, had, they had some existing yard that actually fit and they just wanted enough to get that's around the, the corner. This is not the original, this is the revised. Ah, okay. So that's okay. Yeah. So 
it, during the course of the initial public hearing, you know, they present what they want to do, and then the commission did a site visit, and part of the site visit is to evaluate whether they agree with the wetland delineation as they're showing it, so that then we can decide is the resource area accurate, you know, both under the Wetlands Act and under the bylaw. And then, then they come back and we talk about, you know, what people saw, what their concerns are, whether they think there's impact, and in this case, it's you know totally um, vegetated lot treed you know and so there would certainly be impact you know in terms of alteration to the to the resource area under the bylaw and quite possibly under the wetlands protection act to go to the wetland itself um they also uh so they the commission talked about the, the mitigation as we just talked about and then at the last meeting, um, for further mitigation, we talked about wanting to demarcate the edge of where the work would be, perma you know, some permanent way for homeowners so that they didn't unintentionally, you know, continue the lawn or expand, you know, something with a, a tennis court or something we might not see, you know, that might not have to come back to the town. Um, so they agreed to put in boulders, uh, large boulders, as a way to demarcate that and. We've been kind of using that as one way of delineating them. Sometimes people have used um, vegetation, and sometimes people have used um, fencing, and sometimes people have used a combination of it. But you know, kind of, we try to let people tell us how they want to demarcate it in a way that one, in this case, they're going to sell it. You know, that they think it's going to be, you know, attractive enough. Or in some cases, the developer might want to do it cheaply. You know, and so <laughs> there might be a lot of rocks on the property, and that's a way to use them. Um, if it's a homeowner, they may vegetation they may really want to have you know so we have a few different ways but in anyway in any case so the revisions that they made for this plan which they weren't able to come tonight to present is um, well two things one is that I had question um, to the town planner why this said not buildable lot on it because it was you know obviously they're proposing to build on it now and I wasn't sure whether there was some other restriction that had been recreated when they subdivided the land and there isn't a restriction and at this point um, they didn't know whether they would be able to build on it until they went through the wetland process and so they will be going back to the planning board to um, get a special permit i think to, to build on it but in the course of that in the course of the discussion erica reached out to the engineer and um, we both learned that he needed to have a 50-foot setback from the side line here so they needed to, um, so what they did was they shrunk the size of the house um, a little bit and and did push a little bit more of this proposed wall in this area here into the into the yes. or, or buffer zone. Eric is the town planner, Eric. Yep. You're already. Yep. And they, if you remember, they had already in their last revision added the, the well, they had pushed that into the or yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the real difference is, is the, the size of the building, and which is outside of our jurisdictional area, um, and the stones that they put in. And on this, they have identified 4.8 acres of conservation restriction that would basically go from this line, you know, all the way back. Um, so they end, because of what the setback they needed, they ended up increasing the impact on the wetland. Slightly, yes. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. The, the CRs are good. Yeah. And, and, and it was all within sort of the area that you were, were talking about yeah. allowing activity. Yeah. So, yeah. as far as actually delineating where the wetland uh, boundary is, occasionally we are called on to verify somebody's mm -hmm. delineation of that. Mm -hmm. And there, there are courses in how to do this. There are very specific guidelines oh. for soil composition or vegetation or, or uh, hydrology. Yes. Mm -hmm. and if this, if this is not something that you're familiar with, there are ways to learn about. You don't have to know, don't let that mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And not everybody has to know everything about everything. One of the strengths of the commission is that we each have strengths in different things, and you know, we draw upon each person's knowledge base. And you don't all have to know, so I feel like you're back. But all of us enjoy walking through strands of poison ivy. <laughs> <laughs> which is mainly... You have to point out that yeah. 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 And being hated by the rest of the town too, we like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I don't know if you had any other thoughts that you had wanted to, to show on the plan. I didn't have anything else in my notes either. So I today did 
draft them in order of conditions. If you think that you've got the, all the information you want, you can close the hearing, or we can first we can go through the the um, draft order. Do we have boulders and signs, or just boulders to delineate the? Um, I don't recall that we d decided on signs then, because I well I would I had actually. Um, I don't have. Yeah, I didn't have it. We up. really talked about the signs as we. Oh no, I have boulders every 25 feet in signage in my notes, so we may we may want to include that as a requirement. We hit because I, th I think did we tell them the language that we'd come up with on the other one? Um, no alteration beyond this point or whatever. Bolton wetland resource area beyond this point. Well, so I, I think I don't remember this case in particular, given that it was less contentious than other cases. I, don't remember. I remember in other cases we said we said both signs and boulders, so I think we would have. Wouldn't we have said the same thing to be consistent? Yeah. So the language that we had come possibly. up with. Um, possibly. Yeah, possibly. Possibly not. So it was the Portland Roadhouse. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I think this, I put it in my this was after that one, right? No, this one was before. Oh, this, was this one was before. It was the first hearing uh, I had that night. But I do have the word signage, so I think we must okay. have talked about oh, some fine. signage. Yeah. So I don't have that in the draft order. It would be useful if, if we did come up with a consistent. consistent. Well, except for what Carol says, was sometimes in some cases we want to leave people flexibility if it's a homeowner. In this case, it's somebody who's going to sell the land, you know, sell the home after it's built. But a homeowner we could come might up with want a stencil that someone could you know, sandblast to the bones. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can do. It. <laughs> well, I know I, I, the language was something along the lines of wetland. Bolton Wetland Resource beyond this point or yeah. something like that. And I was telling Janet today, um, someone filed a building permit for a pool the other day, and I was looking at it, and I called them to say, you know, there is open space behind the um, the property line, and just you know, do you know where the property line is? And he said, oh yeah, I saw the signs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they weren't our signs; they were from they were and they were open space signs, not wetland, but they right. were from another an, um, a subdivision where the, at the time the planning board had required signs to be put around the back. Where the open space was, so you know it worked. Yeah. Good, so, yeah. good lesson for us. We should require that more often. So, mm -hmm. so, do you want to go through the draft order before we close, sure. just in case there's anything that comes up that you just feel like we sure. need to ask him, we and have, we'd have to continue? For we have 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, did we so give it a half an hour? We gave it a half an hour. Okay. At least on the. Whatever high tide is, I suppose. So, and then I should just mention, um, this is another gentleman who's interested in the commission's work, um, John. <laughs> so we were just telling people if they want to come up and see anything, you know, feel free. It's a light agenda tonight with not a lot of public um, attending, so, you know, we can explain more as we go. So, and I would say, normally I try to have an order of conditions drafted to send out <coughs> to, with the commission's packet like the weekend before the meeting so that they'll have time to review it. But I took vacation last week and didn't get it up until today. So they haven't really had a chance to review it. Should, should, we, should we explain that normally someone will come in with a, let's say, a request for a determination to see if if our jurisdiction even applies? And if, if we come back with a positive on that, then we're likely to come up with a set of orders of condition for them as guidelines to proceed, given that we do have jurisdiction. Right. And so, so there's a there's different ways of filing. In this case, the applicant filed a notice of intent, knowing that they were doing work that was within the resource area, and that they they would likely have intended active impact, you know, to the resource. So they didn't do the request for determination step. Um, but the result, as Jim is saying, is that in order for them to then go forward, they have to get either an approved order of conditions, uh, well, I have to get an approved order of conditions to go forward. We can deny a project as well. So if somebody didn't provide the information that we needed or um, they really weren't able to or didn't want to work with us to come up with mitigation or come up with some way to having avoided it or, or come up with some other alternatives, the commission can deny it. <coughs> and the, the recourse is, if, if the commission denies it, under the Wellness Protection Act, somebody can appeal to the Department of Environmental Protection of the state, or under the bylaw, they re apply, um, they appeal it to court. And we don't have a lot of appeals. We have some, but not a lot. Um, 
I don't think we've had one since I've been here. Not since I've been on, yeah, the last two years. Okay, we have had some since I've been here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a while, but um, it, it, so it's not that often. And usually, I mean, because the commission usually tries to reach consensus amongst themselves and has worked with the applicant long enough to try to get, you know, what they need to get out of them um, to, to, to be able to issue an order. And these, uh, these requests can, uh, can span the whole gamut from somebody saying, gee, this is what I want to do with my property, and they have all the plans mm -hmm. carefully laid out, and we say, yes, as long as you do X, Y, and Z, and then we issue an order, and then they come back and say, yeah, we're done. Mm -hmm. To a development like Century Mills Estates, which is 75 unit housing, which has been going on for years and will continue to go on for years. So it's a, it, and everything in between. Yeah, and so and, and one of the other factors is sometimes we have applications like this was a, an engineering firm that did the application and provided the notice of intent and answered all the questions and was had the professional expertise to kind of address the issues the commission was concerned with. Sometimes we have homeowners come in who really are like you all, who, who, you know, or maybe less even knowledgeable that there is a commission, but I told them they had to go to the commission, you know, and so they need a lot more hand-holding and guidance and, you know, working through the process. Because it, it is an administrative process to, mm -hmm. for a lot of Are we allowed to ask questions? Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. So how, is there a formula for determining what's effective mitigation? Um, or how does that get decided? Mm, no, that's... Well, that's the bylaw does, the bylaw does, does the, talk about commensurate, you know, so uh -huh. it should be something that's along the, the Is that where the lines. appeals start to... Come in to play um, if, if they are not happy with the appropriate. No, usually if you're here. getting to the point where you're talking about mitigation, you've already agreed. I mean, enough so that this is going to proceed. I think if you if we deny something, then it goes to appeal. Well, we've had we have issued. I mean, again, it was not when you, any of you guys were on the board, but we there was a project that were you, were you on the board for Old Bay? Yes. Yeah. So the commission, um, it was a lot of alteration, and it was crossing a wetland to get to an upland area and the commission um, worked very well with the engineering company firm that was representing the, the applicants but the applicants were not very happy with um, anything that we had to say you know the whole step of the way and they ended up n not really doing the full appeal I think that they more or less threatened an appeal yeah. and then they dropped it but um, you know, so there are cases sometimes when we have issued an approval, but either they thought it was too restrictive or, you know, they just, you know, they were going to appeal from the get-go, you know. The mitigation, though, it's, it's, sometimes you can't really have it be the same, you know, they, they can't, if they're taking up a part of the wetland, they're not necessarily going to create a wetland. They might um, put in a planting that has some habitat value. So we might not get the same type of value, but we'll get some other type of wetland-related value. Um, in well, the, and that's in the buffer zone and in the aura. But in the wetland itself, oh, the Wetlands Protection Act regulations are specific about one to one yeah, alteration. You know, so if you alter the bordering vegetated wetland, you have to re replicate that bordering vegetated wetland. Um, we have a project later that's coming up that there's work in a riverfront area and um, the riverfront area is a little different than the bordering vegetated wetland. The, all the resource areas are a little different, but th there are some guidelines as to what's uh, appropriate mitigation, especially under the Wetlands Protection Act for wetland alteration. It is a little bit more um, right. ambiguous so, with, with right. the aura. So for this, for example, when the impact is on the aura, um, the person's, the mitigation was a conservation restriction on a piece of land that was several acres in size, which is much bigger than, you know, their impact. But on the other hand, the, the land was already, it's largely wetland anyway and largely protected. So that it's not like they were giving the town these, these acres, it's they were just adding a little bit more protection to a somewhat protected area anyway, something that would already be in the, under the jurisdiction of. Because when we were looking at the plan originally, they, they, we were probably not going to be allowing as much yard. You know, it, it wasn't something that I think anybody would have been able to really justify in the, in the order when we make our findings and, and decide it. Um, 
but one of the things that they did need to do, as it turned out, they needed to put the well in the in the aura area. Mm -hmm. And we have on other projects, and so again, we try to be somewhat consistent with things. If if it's if something small and temporary like a well needed to go into an area, a resource area, and we thought during the course of the installation it really wasn't going to have a lot of impact, we may require it to be restored and left in a natural condition except for, for when they need to go and repair it. So there are some temporary impacts that sometimes happen as well. But in this case, the question has agreed. I guess essentially we haven't voted, we haven't voted on it yet, but to permit the small amount of grading mm -hmm. and for the yard um, because of the mitigation seemed to come yeah. through. I mean, I found, I actually found, just the question you asked was a good one because I found that the hardest thing when I started here to kind of figure out what's fair because right. you're not, you're comparing apples and oranges. So, uh, you know, it's hard to tell sometimes. And there's the question but, of would it have happened anyway, right? And would, what? Would that land have been conserved anyway? Yeah. Uh, but right, exactly. So it would be, but so. But on the other hand, there, the impact they were having isn't on a huge area, so they're only adding a little bit of a level of protection. But they were only having an impact on a small amount of wetland resource area. And so you don't know how the regulations are going to change over time, or whether so. So the per, the conservation restriction, if it can be um, permanently protecting the wetland, <coughs> you know, then um, that's something that we've done now. You know, instead of hoping that it's always going to be protected or that some other owner down the road is not going to say, well, I'm going to try to cross this wetland to get to this little upland portion and there, there I want to build my, you know, um, my next office space, you know, out in the, you know, woods of my property or whatever. So, and the restriction we haven't worked through, but the restriction really is intending to, to limit any development of the rest of the property. It doesn't mean we wouldn't necessarily, and we'll talk about it when we get to that point, you know, whether we'd allow trails or, you know, allow you know, recreational use, cross country skiing, or if there was a pond, you know, skating or fishing or things like that. Now, now uh, an aspect that is somewhat helpful is that, yes, from time to time there are consumers that are going in on their own, it's their first project, they don't, they don't know what they're getting into. Uh, at the other end of the spectrum, there are developers who will develop a lot at a time or two around town and Gee, they've been here before, and we've got, and talked through other projects with them before, and they have environmental consultants who've been here before, and they've been through it before. And so when we talk about uh, what you may end up having to do in this property is pretty much similar to what you did with the previous property. They know what we're referring to, and they, they know ahead of, ahead of time what to expect. So that, that actually helps us as well. So now you're getting down to your time limit. Okay, so we should yes. probably go through the order. <laughs> so again, so what I usually do with the commission is not read every condition because we have a sort of a boilerplate. So I, I just read, go through the things that are um, not uh, never really to this project or applicable to this project that I need to review them. So again, the general description is construction of a new dwelling with a portion of the retaining wall and yard within the adjacent upland resource area. The proposed well is also within the aura. The applicant proposed to place a permanent conservation restriction on approximately 4.8 acres of land as mitigation for the loss and alteration of the aura. So that's, you can just recap for the most part. And so one of the things that we didn't talk about with Rick was um, some security, you know, security bond escrow. So just thinking about it, you know, I don't have an amount to put in, um, but I was, and so the question for you guys is, you know, would you want the security to be for the construction and installation of the well and the boulder delineation? And is there anything else you would want to be under that? I mean, that's what we've included in other ones. We have? Yes, we have. Yep. Okay. Well, it's not that just included with when you say boulders. No, because they didn't have the signage. Okay. And then I'm assuming that you don't want security for restoration because they're not requiring restoration. So I took that one out. How do, we, how do we ensure that the CR happens when we? Well, I'll get to what I wrote in here and see if you think it's all right. Um, so under the special conditions, 
Um, I had that the applicant slash owner shall establish the limit of disturbance with a permanent demarcation of boulders as shown on the approved plans prior to receiving occupancy to the dwelling. So that was trying to give a time frame. It was one we've used in other orders, maybe not recent ones that you've done, but I mm -hmm. had it from another one. Um, and then these next few relate to the conservation restrictions. So there's three of them, and that was how I had broken it out on another one, so I just kind of cut and pasted. The applicant and owner shall submit a conservation restriction and application to the Executive Office of Environmental of Energy and Environmental Affairs for a proposed conservation restriction for approximately 4.8 acres as shown on the approved plan. That would be one. The applicant slash owner shall record the state approved conservation restriction at the Worcester Registry of Deeds and provide the book and page number of the recording to the Conservation Office prior to receiving occupancy to the dwelling. So sort of tied it to, to the same thing, occupancy. In the event that the state will not accept the conservation restriction, a common law conservation restriction will prevail and will be re recorded um, after 30 years and then re record, sorry, would be recorded for 30 years and then re recorded um, every 20 years following. And that this would be a permanent condition, that this may be a permanent condition that would run with the certificate of compliance. And then, actually I did have some signage, but um, the applicant slash owner shall install a conservation restriction signs along the boundary of the adjacent yard prior to receiving occupancy to the dwelling. So in that case, I was saying about the conservation restriction, but if you wanted to do wetland, you could, we could come you up could with it. do wetland. Too. And wetland. Mm -hmm. Now, why does the renewal of the common law CR, why is that made in your bed and will be? Well, because if they record, the, if the state approves the um, permanent conservation restriction, it, that'll be void. You wouldn't have to have it as a, oh. on the certificate of compliance. Right, I thought you were saying, though, in the event that the state doesn't. Yeah, the common law ones. Right, but it, it, then the second yeah, part was, this may be a permanent condition that will run on the certificate of compliance, meaning that it would be something that if somebody's looking at the certificate of compliance, they'd know that they have to do this every 20 years. Oh, why don't we say it will be a well, because if the other one's recorded, yeah. they oh, won't have yeah. a common law CR. It, it's only if the state one doesn't go oh, through. Okay. Okay. Well, if the state doesn't accept, you're saying if it doesn't accept, then why don't you say this will be, right? You're already saying that if the state does not accept the CR, it will be a common law. Okay. I mean, I just... Don't want well, because I'm saying this time. may be a permanent condition, and and so it doesn't. It, that's the part. The sex, that sentence was that it may. That's the part. Yeah. Uh, it may be a permanent condition, but it may not be. Well, oh, okay. I, I was thinking that the renewal every 20 years. No, that's not the part. I'm okay. saying that that has that that would have to happen. But whether we put it as a permanent condition on the certificate of compliance, that's the part that's uh, the may. Okay. Do you want to reword it? I think if I were the homeowner, I would read this as saying it might not have to be done. Well, it won't. It, it, the homeowner is not going to ever see it unless yeah, it yeah, becomes yeah. a. Com it's just the common CR, common CR, because this is going to be part of the order. So they're going to follow this. They're going to either get it recorded, uh, recorded at the Worcester Registry of Deeds mm -hmm. after getting it approved by the Secretary of State, and if not, then they're going to have just recorded. The, they'll record the common law CR. Hmm. Okay. I don't know, just to me the wording says that it doesn't necessarily have to be renewed every 20 years. No, that's not what it's meant to say. I can try to make sure that that doesn't stay that way. Because that's not what it's meant to say. Okay. I guess since I didn't go to do the site visit, do you think straw wattles are sufficient on this site, or was there a, enough of a slope that you think they should have hay bales or hay bales and silt fence? They showed. Sloping, right? They showed. Um, well, it's, it's they showed a snow it's. fence and uh, straw wattles. I don't know if it's even enough of construction to know. What it didn't seem that steep. 
strokes to me. Mm -hmm. It seemed gradual. Kind of step down a bit. Yeah. 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 So I'm okay with what they proposed. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a sort of our standard conditions, you know, that the commission can require something more if we feel like I just if we knew that we wanted something else. Um, and that's kind of it for special. Oh wait, the other question was, is that, um, and it's not a big deal, I think, but in this case, the plan is signed by a civil engineer, and in the when they come back to get a certificate of compliance, you know, our standard statement is that if the plans have been stamped by a registered professional engineer, um, architect, landscape architect, or land surveyor, so I was just going to add in a civil engineer in that case. I think that's, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, there's another plan that's coming up later that was um, stamped by a sanitarian. I'm not sure whether mm -hmm. the sanitarian for the driveway was the right yeah, you know, I stamp. Yeah, I was, I was so like, we're not doing stuff today. Right? Yeah. Okay, right. so, so we would not have the conditions about the conservation restriction typically in the Wetlands Protection Act um, order conditions because being it just buffer zone work, the, the, the act doesn't require mitigation. Okay. 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 So I would just be putting it in the bylaw. Okay. And the security as well. Okay. So if you don't have any other questions or issues that you need to keep it open for, then you can close the hearing and vote to issue the certificate. Okay. i make a motion to close the hearing. And uh, vote the order or sign on the issue? So you're going to decide you need to issue, vote to issue. Vote to issue the order of condition. Second. Okay. Aye. Okay. okay. So. Um, I guess I would say as discussed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, I make a motion that we approve the order of conditions as discussed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Did Jim get one and Brian got one, or I didn't get? Who's, who's the second? Oh, oh. I think they tied. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're calling one. yesterday and they are still working with the planning board at this point on their um, special permits and they have a site walk with them tomorrow night and then they have a public meeting I believe with them a continued public meeting with them so at this point he has um, I'm told that he's looked at all of the um, comments that Horsley Witten had um, and was prepared to respond to them but if depending on what happens at the site walk they're looking to add some additional parking, I guess, that might assist the senior housing area over there. And if they do that, he may have to modify the drainage again. 
So he requested to continue to October 7th, which is our next meeting after the 30th. Okay. So I don't have any other hearings that night if you want to come on first. Okay, so 7 o'clock for comment? That was the next meeting I went to? Well, they asked to go out to the, the for two meetings because, yeah, he wasn't sure that they were prepared for the 30th, which is that next meeting. So do I have to say anything official about about, what? about putting, I mean, about closing this or continuing this? We just did. So continue. Yes. Continue. So continue. Yeah. October 7th. Okay, so now we're doing Barra Springs? So yes. Okay. Uh, Barra Springs across the... Uh, Bromfield Cross Country yep. Team? Yep, my name is Marissa Steele. I live in Harvard and I'm representing the Bromfield, Bromfield Cross Country um, Team. Um, I also am in charge of the kids annual trail race that you guys have been nice enough to let us do the trail race there every year. It's been five years. I think we've had it at Bowers and it's a phenomenal event. I really like it a lot. Um, so just to give you a little history of the Bromfield Cross Country, now Neshoba already runs at Bowers. Um, Bromfield used to run in the trails behind our track. And the trails are very narrow and they're very rooty and there was numerous injuries. And so um, two years ago, they moved it over to Fruitlands, which is theoretically a beautiful site. But um, what we found is, is most of the, the trails that they're running on are kind of slanted sideways, which makes it very difficult to run on. There's also a lot of ankle turnings. And um, the grass is very, um, even though we mow it, it's very thick and there's a lot of hidden little popply divots. Um, and so, the team has gone through a transition phase over the last couple of years where there's been a change of coach, change of coach, and there's been very limited continuity. So every year someone kind of pieces together a course and it's kind of less than adequate. And then the new coach comes along and pieces together a course and less than adequate. Um, I personally was a cross country runner from little kid through college, and um, I just love Bowers. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's just like the perfect cross country venue. It's just gorgeous. Um, so I keep on trying to tell the coach, please go to Bowers, please go to Bowers. Um, anyway, the new coach wants to go to Bowers. Um, the AD is like, well, we're running at Brutlands again. But he asked me to ask the town of Bolton if they'd be kind enough to let us run at Bowers either this year or next year because. Um, it's just for it just isn't seeming to work out as well as we wanted it to. Um, there is potential for our trails behind the track to be upgraded to be accessible and usable, um, but it's kind of a little in the pipe dream stage. So that's. And you had, um, I think, in the email you sent me, which I can't remember if forwarded or not. Um, you, three cross country. Yeah, every year it's different, but the maximum it would be would be four. The minimum it would be two. Um, the races are historically on Thursdays, and um, the shows have historically been on Tuesdays, so there would not be an overlap. Okay. Um, it's they're usually dual meets, which means there's two teams. Um, it is boys and girls teams, but because we come from a smaller school division. The number of runners that we'll have will be less than the Neshoba teams, um, just historically. Um, in terms of the bus standpoint, um, I thought that perhaps the bus could stay parked at Bromfield and then come back and pick the kids up when they're done so that we don't have to worry about a big bus being parked there. Um, the porta potty, I'd be, you know, we'd be willing to split the price. I think Neshoba, I think, mm -hmm. yes, pays for the yeah. porta potty yeah. during the season. Um, and if we were going to do it, I'd be more than happy to split the price with the, the Neshoba team. Um, personally, I've always made sure that when we leave the kids' trail race that it's spotless, that every little bit is picked up, and I would guarantee our team would treat it with the same respect. So. Now, the, most of the wooded part of Bower Springs is Harvard's anyway, right? So right. So there where the trail is is actually where the cross-country race is primarily at Bolton. Oh, um, but all the trails, the peripheral trails, mm -hmm. are Harvard. Do um, they already run through the forest at Park? Or? Mm -hmm. The kids do, just on yeah. their own. Oh, but not as part of the Not as part of the course, not as part of their cross course. Yeah. So okay. how about the marking of the course? Like, um, I think, pro I don't, can't say for sure, because I'm not the coach and I'm not the one who would design the course. I would suspect they would use the same course as Neshoba. Okay, because I did, I, so I called the Neshoba AD, mm -hmm. um, and she was, you know, very willing to work 
with um, Bromfield, mm -hmm. but did want to make sure that you know there was communication oh, right. between so the coaches you have in particular. Wrong arrows, right? Yeah. And so that was one of her questions was about the marking of the course, and really, she, I think she felt like the coaches would need to talk about okay. that. Absolutely. And um, she also would be very interested to split the porta potty yep. if that was going to be the yep. case, and that you know that. Um, you know, obviously they have to make sure that the schedule wasn't conflicting with each other. Yeah, yeah and so I think what happens, and I, I can't say this for sure, but generally the league meets, um, the representatives from the league meet prior to the season starting. And, and classically, I know um, my sons run four seasons now, and when I go over to Bowers, I have always seen the show on Tuesdays, and my son has always been on Thursdays. Now, again, that's just in the last four years. I can't say what next year's going to be, but... Um, they're obviously, I think if they know in advance, they can say, well, we're just not doing it that day. We have to do it on the, yeah. What I also try to do, um, and so, uh, is to post when the meets are going to mm -hmm. be. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't done it yet for this fall, mm -hmm. and their first one is at the end of this month, September 23rd. Mm -hmm. But so that's helpful if either somebody can let me know that it's posted on Bromfield's mm -hmm. website and I can just get it or somebody sends it to me or make something sure, like yeah. that. Yeah. Because, um, the public who's not interested in going there to watch people run, you know, have asked that, um, you yeah, know, they, they, they at least have a chance to know that, you know, they don't want to be there that time. Mm -hmm. People who like to bring their dogs there and mm -hmm. have the dogs run probably should pick a different day to, to do that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's, I've never heard of any conflicts. You know, at least it doesn't get back to us. If, mm -hmm. if anyone's feeling like there's conflicts, there probably are. I mean, I'm sure people go and walk, and then they're like, oh, look at all these people here. Uh, maybe they do a less of a walk. Who knows? I'm not sure. But. Yeah, you know, it's interesting with the kids' trail run. Um, when I go out the morning of to kind of make sure the trails are cleaned off, I see a lot of dog walkers then, and they just they already see the poster and they know I'm not coming back or I'm not going to be here around two. Yeah. But it's never been an issue for that. So. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I mean, the only other thing I guess I would just say is that you know those trails are really rooted as well. Yeah, yeah, they, they are. And That's you know, it's, in, was it? it's, it, it's interesting rooted. because even though they're rooted, the difference is it's wide. It's yeah. wide, and you have the ability to step. Whereas the what we had behind our track, they were single path route, and there was no yeah. there was no escape. So, but yeah, I, I'm aware of that. Um, so that's the story. I have the um, the AD and the uh, coach are at somewhat at odds on where they're running this year, or where they want to run. The AD is really pushing for Fruitlands, and the coach is really pushing for Bowers. And um, my sus suspect is is that the the AD will win out this year, and the coach will hopefully get what he wants next year. But I don't I don't know for sure. Is an AD and athletic, athletic director, director? I'm sorry, yeah, yeah athletic director. Yeah, he's trying to um, lay low his first year and kind of build into the position. So, um, we do this year. We do have three races. It's um, they're all Thursdays. It's the 18th, which is next Thursday, the 25th, and October 2nd. Um, that's for this year, and then next year again, it would probably be around two or three again, type of thing. So. Do I, don't, I don't really see a major problem, as they say, say, as long as you can coordinate with the show, because we just told them first and they're in town, and that doesn't seem like that would be a problem. Um, this isn't so much for Bromfield, but down the road we should probably, because I would imagine other schools would have interest too, depending, um, that just to set a limit on how many each year will allow, and maybe it's you know, first come, first serve, and the ones that we've used in the past. Um, I don't think it's a problem now, but I can just see that if, if there's a meet there, you know, if it's, yeah. you can't go on, well, not you can't go, Thursdays it's going to be very crowded, so I'll go another day, now it's Tuesdays and Thursdays, which is fine, but, you know, if it's mm -hmm. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, you can't use it, then mm -hmm. people are going to start getting, I would imagine people are yeah, start most, pushing back. Most people know. have had their home school course that has been their course for years and years yeah. and years, yeah. and they yeah. don't change. That's um, and, you know, it just seems that we struggle each year. We've had a different course for the last four years, but most schools... They go to the same. They do the same course, and yeah. then they have yeah. a course record. And and yeah, and they can get there for the school. And yeah, yeah, yeah I know. But uh, I don't have a problem yeah, with Bromfield. I mean, you know, respectful. I think the show would appreciate it too. Yeah, they should share the porta potty yeah. cost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an awesome deal. So, do you want to say that you would um, allow it? for the next couple of years and, and have and evaluate how it works or do you want to allow it in perpetuity or do you want to probably you know, a couple of years things yeah. just to you know 
Yeah, I mean, it sounds like they may be trying to ramp it up. So if it doesn't happen this year and it doesn't happen until next, maybe you may want to see it go through a couple of seasons and see yeah. how it goes. Yeah. Sounds good. And as I said, I've, um, you know, I've worked with you right. over the last couple of years. I, if there's any issues whatsoever, and, and, it, and it may just be more, and again, a lot of stuff doesn't come back to us, but, you, you know, I mean, there is, unfortunately, that some people don't take care of the dog waste, you know, so, I mean, some people, you may hear about things, and again, it's not stuff, we don't have any staff, really, to no. do any ranger, and, mm -hmm. you know, ma managing that, that mm -hmm. land, that, you know, for the purposes of, you know, the races or for mm -hmm. the, um, right. some of the other events that happen there. So, um... What Maurice has done in the past is just, and it, actually maybe this is just something else, is that at the end of the season it might just be good to be notified that the Port of John's been removed and, you know, that the markings are all, and it's just spray painted, is that too? Mm -hmm. And done? then I know last year for the first time, I had never seen it before, last year for the first time you put up small little sticks with a tiny little Yeah, letter. I do remember that. That was the first year that I'd seen that, but they were down right at the end because yeah. they were gone by the time the kids' trail race was there. Yeah. So just, you know, to notify us that everything's been cleaned mm -hmm. off or removed, if, if there was anything for that. Mm -hmm. um, the question I have for you is, is um, I know for the trail race we have a policeman help with the parking and stuff. Do they, does Neshoba do anything like that? Not that I'm parking? aware of. And so, I they, the I'm not sure, yeah, I've talked to the coach, um, our coaches, I'm not sure who the girls' coaches, if it's the same or mm -hmm. different, but, um, they may put a sign out at Harvard Road for where Flanagan mm -hmm. Road turns mm -hmm. in. Or if you're coming from Harvard, I'm not sure. You know that. You can do that there. little, yeah, the little yeah, side the little dog. You know, you might put a sign for that. Um, do they park on Harvard Road? I'm not aware of. I don't know. Okay, I'll so, have to check with the. You know, and, it, and and then if it seems as though you're getting such overflow that you need to park that way, then you probably want to let the police know. Just I can't imagine we would it's simply because our numbers are going to be smaller than what their yeah. numbers are. So I think I'll ask the coach what what they right. do with their parking yeah. so that we're prepared. How many cars would you expect? Well, there's forty uh, about thirty kids, boys and girls on the oh. team, and then so the parents come. Yeah. yeah. But not everyone. Not every parent, right? And then then the other team will have anywhere from twenty to thirty. So there's probably going to be. 50 kids running, so there's probably going to be 30 cars, maybe? And there's space for some number of cars right in the parking lot. Yeah, not 30, though. No, you well, can't. no, but then you go up, flying, you have a lot, a lot of cars to get back to Harvard Road. It's a narrow road. So you yeah, can you can only park where it's, it's not easy. Um, what Tom Denny does, which is a big help, and I don't know if Neshoba does this, is, is they train all the parents the first race. Mm -hmm. um, if you park all the cars vertically, you can get a lot of cars in there. We used to do it for Tom Denny. They'd actually have us back in vertically. Mm -hmm. All of our cars, and you know, you can go take them to spots. Sides? Oh, they can do it on both sides, right? And, you know, it's one of those, if everybody pays attention, yeah. you can get like 25 cars, I should oh, say right. 25. But, but yeah, yeah, we had a lot of cars mm -hmm. in there for pickups and drop-offs, okay. um, or for when they were doing like their skits and stuff, and all the parents would come. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just that first day that they had something, they showed everybody, like, you will park this way, or you will be walking, you know. From, mm -hmm. And we all did, like, everybody's pretty good. If you show them how to park, they... Yeah, they I don't think so, you're yeah. going to get the same attention with the um, high school kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, it would be something that I, I can assign a parent to that. Yeah, be there. To, to yeah. 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 And then I would have the bus. Just, you know, people come late, open. people come, you know, some one time and they may not come another time. I mean, that's how I usually saw yeah. and people showing up for things. But mm -hmm. um, but I would talk to, so um, Steve, Steve Beckwith is the um, cross country coach. Boys, coach. Boys. And I don't know if he's, he's moving. Been. Yeah, but he's still going to be the coach. Oh, he is? Yeah. He's moving to Grafton. Yeah, he told me he's still going to be the coach. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, so this year we're going to give him to talk to them in case he doesn't stick with them. Either. He wants to stick with them, I'm sure. They have yeah. a good team. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so we'll reevaluate in, in, in a couple seasons after you've had a couple seasons there. Let us, you know, it's not Is it this all right year. then if I, um, I'll just keep you posted yes this year, no this yes. year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then if we do, I'll put uh, or get to you a sign for the um, schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you so Good. much. I really appreciate it. And then the kids' race is what November second. Second. It's Sunday, November second. Yeah. So if you have a poster when you get we'll that, that, yep. Yeah, we can put that up. Perfect. And then um, if there's something I can put, um, you know, on a temple or board or whatever, because I know we 
did try to let other, it, it wasn't just Harvard kids, right? Yeah, it but it, it ends up, you know, it's been averaging 80 a year. It hasn't gotten bigger, it hasn't gotten smaller, it just stays 80 a year, so. Mm -hmm. It works out fine. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's a great gem. You guys are fortunate. Get a chance to get kids outside. Yeah, I know. Thanks again. Take care. Okay. 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 So we have ten that. minutes before the next ten minutes before us. Do we want to? Is there something little we can do? Um. Well, you can do the minutes if you're ready to. Those are older minutes. Some that I sent out a while ago. So I don't know if anybody. Had a chance to look at those and write it down. I gave them all a good skim through. I did not see any yeah. issues. Yeah. So, okay. so then, so then maybe you want to make 50. the motions? Sure. So just make a motion. One make by one. one, do I have to do it? I think no, one. yeah, you can. Okay, I'm make a motion. We approve the minutes for May 20th, uh, June 3rd, June 17th, and July 15th, 2014. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I can give you a couple updates okay. as well. So I have on the agenda an update for Fife Shire, um, but since I was away last week and was pretty tied up the week before, I haven't been out there in, in a little while. Mm -hmm. I did have a call um, both from Martha Remington, I know she's not here, um, and um, Rona Balco, who are both part of the Friends of Fife Shire group, and they both um, said things look pretty good, you know, that they, they didn't have any complaints or concerns. Um, when, right before I left, they were trying to make sure they, they were going to have to bring in some of the stones for the walkway for going down on either side of the, as, as it slopes yeah. down to the, um, the bridge crossing that we had. And um, so they were trying to make sure that they got something that looked as natural as possible and fit with the, you know, that was flat and it was certain size. They had given certain sizes and dimensions in the plan, and so they were trying to make it work as much as they could. Because I told them what I thought everyone was envisioning was sort of steps that would go down, because something else, something less than that, it was just going to be too steep. And um, I don't think that's exactly how, to, how they had it on the plan. So they were, they were trying to just work that through. So I'd, I'd like to get over there to see what they've ended up with, how far they've gone. But the last time I was there, um, and I don't know if I reported on it when we met last, but so they had taken out, they had lowered the dam. We had met with the um, uh, Division of o uh, Office of Dam Safety. Had I mentioned that to you before? Yes. Yes. Okay, so they, they had seen the work and the engineers were going to be verifying, you know, with, with their as-built information that it was below the jurisdictional height, so that it will no longer be jurisdictional. And um, anyway, they had and they had put down the mat and they had seeded the area, and the seed was is now has been coming up. I mean, it's been a couple of weeks. It had come up. They did like an annual rye originally with the other seed mix that was a slower growing seed mix just to get it established, because they had to get back out on it to take the coffer dam out. So they wanted to try to get vegetation growing. So I don't know if they've taken the coffer dam out yet or not, but I'm assuming that they probably have. Um, and then it was then they were. I believe that they were also doing the wetland planting and um, putting back the soils and and stabilizing. You know, getting to the point to stabilize the rest of the site. So it it was really pretty far along, like two thirds of the way. I think. Um, I mean, like that felt like before when I left. So it should be. Okay. Yeah. I know I almost came back to walk it after I left work today, but then I saw the traffic oh, going yeah. further past here and I was yeah. like, I'm not gonna have time. <laughs> so I didn't get there. Mm -hmm. Can I the one more way? Yeah. I don't have any bills, okay. but um I do have some correspondence. Okay. Um, just to mention a few things. So I mentioned that the planning board was doing their site walk for Condine. Um, the planning board also has some hearings coming up. One that is, I think I mentioned before was on the Clinton Savings Bank, which we've already approved. Mm -hmm. um, there's a scenic road hearing um, on Old Bay Road, removal portion of a stone wall and cutting trees. 
uh, at 369 Old Bay. I haven't had a chance to look that up, but the hearing on that is tomorrow, so I guess I have to look it up right away. Um, and they are, as I mentioned, content. Let's see. And then the selectmen are actually having a hearing the end of the month, September 25th, on the Wachusett uh, Realty, the bank, Clinton Savings Bank. Um, are they converting it, maybe residential to commercial? Maybe that's all right. Well, it just says pursuant to the code of the town of Bolton, which and I don't know the section of the code that it's pursuant to, yeah. but um, they have to hold a hearing, evidently. And then in October, there's going to be a hearing. October 1st, um, the zoning board will be holding a hearing on plans um, to, uh, there's a variance being sought to, um, a sideline variance being sought to develop lot 2A, which is directly adjacent to the solar energy facility. Uh, the existing gravel pit to be developed into a smaller solar energy facility. So we may want to, you know, communicate with them on that since we had the comments before about the fencing all around. I don't again. I haven't seen a plan for that one, so I don't know. Did it get corrected? Not that I'm aware of. So I think that's pretty much it for those. The next. Is there something else we can do in two or three minutes? Um, well, I will just say on the Paulson gift, I have not scheduled anything. Um, I haven't heard from them in a while. The last time I heard from them, they were, you know, disappointed that we hadn't. Got, I haven't gotten you out to take a look at the site. It is still pretty dry, so maybe there's a time. Um, you know, you don't have any other scheduled site visits, so I could try to see if I can coordinate something. Right, was this a piece of property that we need to go through somebody else's land yes. to get to yeah. without drowning? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I, can, I can see if they're still interested in us taking a look at it or not. Okay. It was uh, not a very big piece of gear, it was less than a few, a couple acres or yeah. something. Yeah. It was yeah. contiguous to something, right? Didn't it Correct. connect? It Cranberry Meadow or something like yeah. that. Cran it's in the vicinity of Cranberry Meadow. I don't remember whether that was a direct connection or not. I think there was another piece that we might have adjacent to 495, another smaller piece that we have there, too. It's been a while. That's also yeah. 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 That, that might be. Yeah. I know it was a, this Paulson gift was adjacent to something that's yeah. already protected. Okay. So I'll see if there's one just in the things out. So, I mean, the only other thing that I had really got on the agenda was, um, the, oh, the, the, well, there is another announcement, which is that there's also a meeting this week, um, and I don't know if you've all seen the emails or any of you got letters directly, but um, the citizens group is having a meeting over here at Davis Hall about um, to educate people a little bit more about the Tennessee gas proposal. And they're bringing in people, I think, from um, Mass um, Planning, or it's Mass... Uh, it's no Frack Gas. No Frack Gas, gas, gas Mass. I'm trying to think what they're bringing in. How are you doing? It's the same night as parents' teacher conferences, which uh, is definitely... Okay, so this uh, is Thursday the 11th? Yeah, and... What time do you know? Uh, seven. seven, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and you know, it's one too, because that, that's an interesting one. Jim and I kind of talked around this a little bit too, with open meeting laws in general. Um, that it's it's great to go to mm -hmm. and be able, but just to make clear to them, like, you know, I'm here to listen to what you guys have to say. I can tell you what we're doing from Conservation Commission, mm -hmm. but we have to be careful not to say, well, this is what we feel and this is what we will do. and. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there's different views, depending. Well, you um, can just say which hat you're wearing, your personal. Yeah, yeah, no, that's well, it's you know, even with that, because that's what 
Bob ran into. Yeah. Um, it's difficult. I worry about down the line having any. Mm. Oh, part of his concern very, is being very on a nasty. committee, you know. Correct. You know, yeah, but part of it. But speaking at a, a meeting, I don't think that that's an issue. I wonder if. Well, yeah, I, I just don't know. The commissions, what the commission said. That's not. Yeah, it's just to kind of report what we said, yeah. um, but to actually discuss things going forward or, right. with that type of group. That's the type of thing their lawyers will latch on to, and it'll just be a horrible. But so I, I, from the email that went out, I didn't get the impression that that was what the meeting was going to be. No, it was sort of strategizing. I thought it was more to explain. It was more something. information. Yeah. yeah, is what they wanted to be. But I'm just saying this as right. like you know, because we kind of talked around it too. But it's just one of those things to be careful about, especially with, right. you know, with okay. you know what Bob was finding, which is kind of different, but. You know, if they're, they're looking for anything, they can latch on to, and they're very, very vile. So we should tell uh, our guests too. That, so there's, if you've seen the signs, of stop the pipeline. So there's several parcels um, between um, Sawyer Road and Randall Road that are conservation properties, and we were approached March was it maybe I think maybe March. Yeah. Back, yeah by Tennessee Gas um, consultants to survey our land to have us um, have us consider, you know, um, what, or let them survey it so that they could consider whether they would put the pipeline there. And the commission has voted not to allow the survey work to occur. Um, and at this point, they did, never came back to try to negotiate anything else with us, but we're trying to stay on top of the process because it's in, it's our understanding that they're probably going to be filing with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. They've begun the pre-filing process. Yeah, for, yeah Federal Energy, energy that would Regulatory over Commission. Us and we wouldn't be no, that's that's when it starts. That's when it starts to kick us in, and we can we should probably go with the eight o'clock. Because you know, I, I didn't give the update because we can talk more because you weren't there. Right. Yeah. Um, so I did have it on the agenda to get an update yeah, on the select. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Okay. Right. So we'll come back to that. Yeah. But so the meeting is September eleventh um, at seven. Okay. 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 So next, uh, Pace Berlin Road, Common Driveway. Up to they go outside. Oh. I looked there. up and they were there. I know. <laughs> well. That's all right. Are you here for that? No. no you're here for the no, voice right? yeah. right, Let me just tell. Okay. Oh, I want to tell you about the thing. I'm just briefly related to the pipeline. The vernal pools, there were three vernal pools in that Randall Road conservation area that I've had to get certified. I submitted all the paperwork in June, never heard anything. I took to them, talked to them today, finally, after telephone tag for a long time. They have received it. Um, they wouldn't expect to get to it for months. However, given that it's a piece of property that the pipeline might go through, they're going to try to speed it up. Nice. So we might get that sort of those certified, which will be a little bit more um, protection, I guess. Yeah. Um, if we give, if we end up having to give an order of conditions. Yeah, and it's help. I mean, it's helpful information again for FERC, you know, to know that there's either potential or certified. Mm -hmm. We might have more weight if they're certified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to go, we can talk more after this. More stuff coming out of the meeting. Nothing much, but along those lines, the first. Um, Good to bring up a lot of things. Something really get discussed. They're not taking to discuss. Okay, the uh, the last time we were here, I um was asked to write up a um, maintenance management plan for the swales. Right. And I did that, I submitted it to Carol by email on the 26th. Um, I don't know whether or not Carol's had a chance to finish reviewing it. Uh, I know she had taken some time off, mm -hmm. which I was extremely yeah. envious of. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think we do want to talk about that. Yeah. Was, there, uh, was there anything else were we waiting still from Heritage? We were waiting for the letter because they hadn't gotten it yet, but they did send that out by email. There right. should be a copy. Did I see that? I don't know that I saw um, that. I can, I can, I have it. I can email it to you right now. Okay. Um, because um, I thought I went through all my emails yesterday, but and while you were in that folder, you have something for me too. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I saw you go by it. Okay. Thanks. Yes. There was this other order conditions that sent to okay. the wrong address. Does Matt know that? No. 
Okay. No, I was going to scold them now. Oh, okay. Well, okay. I kept the right address in the zone. First. So, um, I didn't really get to look at the O&M plan that you put together until today. I mm -hmm. kind of quickly scanned it yesterday um, after you called, and then Janet had come in this morning to sort of talk a little bit about what was on the agenda today, and mm -hmm. we started to look at it a little bit, but it seemed, at the time, it seemed a little bit confusing, like redundant in some places. It was so I took a stab. I don't know whether you got to see what I re I took a stab yeah, at revising it. Yeah. But I may not have really captured everything. Yeah, I didn't look at your revision. But, uh, Did anybody else get to look at it? No, I, I read. It no, I read the, yeah, no, I, I could print it out too. I did read through it. Um, and you, I think you still had some questions from the last one I had about, about the O&M. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I did was gave it a title. Um, Oh, operation and maintenance plan for common driveway and grass swale because I think we also wanted to include the common driveway or the mm -hmm. driveway in part in this, not just the swale, yep. just from sanding, salting, snow plowing, that sort of thing. So I was going to add something in a little bit about that. Um, the way Matt had it set up was with purpose, and they had intent of this agreement, which um, included that you know it would be the owner's responsibility to maintain um, the, and I had a driveway, the driveway and stormwater treatment system um, in a condition that would allow it to perform as design. And I think, so there's a typical, you know, design that was on the plan. Um, I guess so my, my only other question with you, to you with that is, is there anything else that's not shown on that typical, you know, that they would need to be able to refer back to it to make sure it's performing as designed? No. You know? No, I mean, essentially, the document calls for them to basically have like a notebook to go monitor the growth quarterly when it's first established for the first two years to make sure that there's no bare spots that pop up, regardless of weather conditions monitor it during weather conditions to one, see if it needs to be cleaned out, two, if it needs to be reshaped or replanted due to any, you know, because, you know, some of these rains are getting pretty bad now. Um, and then three, if any sediment does accumulate to take a depth measurement, just clean it. Okay. So, um, so I, I added in just another paragraph about driveway operation and maintenance and just said, the driveway shall be swept free of sand at the end of the winter, and the sand shall be collected and disposed of in a legal manner. Do you have any other suggested language on that? No, actually, that's pretty. That's okay. Tells it all. Okay. Much. Now, and I'm going to jump, but in our standard order conditions, we have a no salt within the resource areas. I don't know what whether. You know what the I mean since it's been a gravel driveway I don't know that the homeowners have had to do anything for de-icing or or what you think you know on the next lot that homeowners I don't want to need to do or whatever. Well, I mean, but it's if, pretty flat. If, if it's in a standard except for on your, right. your individual section. If it's in a standard order of conditions, I'm assuming that the certificate of compliance is going to require that to be a perpetual condition. Um. I'd have to look when we get to that, whether that's what been in the standard or not. But it, uh, so we'll look at the language. I, I just want to bring it up because we could write it into here. If yeah, the, if I mean, if, if you want, we wanted to in. not have the salts within the resource area. So in this case, again, we're talking about the riverfront mm -hmm. and the aura, um, and then the first 25 feet of the, the vegetated wetland associated with the stream. Mm -hmm. I also have snow shall not be plowed into the stream and shall not um, and snow shall not be stockpiled within the riverfront associated with the stream. So I don't know if that's a problem for again I don't, we don't really know what their typical plowing has been, but I'm assuming they probably don't have to stockpile. You know they probably push it off to the sides, right. but so long as not pushing it into the stream, that's sort of the intention that you know get the sediment laden or you know pollutants and stuff dumped directly into it. No, I mean, if you want to put that into it, that's fine. I mean, dumping snow directly into a stream is illegal to begin with. I so. know, but some people need to be told. Right, exactly. <laughs> so. so I figured, you know, hopefully they're going to read this. Um, his next session was um, description of stormwater treatment facilities. And so he just talks about, you know, the stormwater treatment really is are the vegetative swales. And so he describes what they are. 
um, in their intention to, to you know, filter out and settle pollutants. Then he has uh, the inspection program, and so what I well, that's where Janet and I think sort of found some redundancy. It seemed like the inspection program was similar to the maintenance program, which, so I'm not sure whether we needed to repeat it the same way. But again, the inspection program was to conduct the inspections on a quarterly basis for two years, and then I added after the first two years, additional inspections will be necessary for the long dry periods. Oh, some of that's math language. And then I changed the part of, I changed the part a little bit about the spills, if there's any spills. I said, if there is a spill, the owner shall immediately contact the Bolton Fire Department, Department of Environmental Protection, and the Bolton Conservation Commission, and take the appropriate safety and disposal precautions. Because that's really the standard that, you know, they need to let the fire department know if there's that spill. Um, and then he instructs them about keeping records, um, and he talks about the things that you need to look for, the sedimentation sediment condition and depth, water observation, unscheduled maintenance needs, that kind of thing. Um, and then the maintenance program, I really felt like almost the rest of what you had in there was the maintenance program. So what I ended up saying was you had followed the recommended maintenance guidelines from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts stormwater wetland standards, and I said, and I just added as outlined below, because then you had the maintenance of the swale and the inlet and the outlet right. and all those different things. The question, one of the questions I had was, is there a rock splash pad? Because you had in there, rock splash pad shall be replenished to prevent erosion. At the very ends of the grass well. Okay, because there's no detail on that, so nobody would know. Okay. Well, there was supposed to be there was supposed to be rock at the very ends of it for energy dissipation because I talked to that on site. Okay, so should we get um, another detail? Because it doesn't show it on the plan. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I want whoever's going to build it to have the plan that we approve and know what they have to build, which is what we have. Well, I mean, you just talked about putting some riprap at the end of the swale. That's correct. Yeah, but you want it sized appropriately. Well, you're going to use six inch minus, I would think. Anything small, and that will run into the stream anyway. So you need something with some body. But if we're referring to the approved plan in this document, we mm -hmm. should either have it on the plan, right? Yeah, I mean we can draw a detail on the plan one like a minute ago. Okay, so we're really talking about three or four feet. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, we're talking about Just a very, very small yeah. section. I have a very basic question. I'm not a swale person, so I don't know. So is it standard to say that insects and rodents shall not be harbored in the swale? Well, yeah. we'll, what, we'll put a no like trespassing that? sign there. <laughs> exactly. No, it was well, part of the maintenance plan to clear about it, any uh, nests or anything that's building, and there's something that's building far around there. Well, it already says, well, so to be insects, I think that I'm talking about standing water and mosquito larvae, right? I mean, I thought it already said that there can be no standing water for more than 48 hours anyway. Mm -hmm. So I was curious about having that specific thing about the insects, and then the rodent. I, is that really does that really have an impact on the function of the swale? I if mean, they start if if you have rodents start building nests and burrowing in. When I say rodents, when I say rodents, I, I, say rodents yeah. I just don't mean mice. I mean rodents like, are um, beavers. Go for yeah. what do we call those things? Uh, Woodchucks. Woodchucks. Yeah. yeah. Beavers are rodents. And is that do they are they are attracted they? to those? I wouldn't think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah. They're attracted to those areas. Absolutely. That's whales? Yeah. Interesting. That pressure there. This was sent out on the 27th of July. August. August, I'm sorry. August. Okay. Which so, so you're going to forward it to me, so? Yeah, I'll re-forward okay. it to you. I know they did send it to you, but it could have got lost in the shuffle. Well, that was the day I left for the vacation, so I may not have read it. And I may, yesterday, I've only read new emails, so who knows? <laughs> 
Um, all right, so I will not adversely affect, it will not result in prohibited take. Okay, yeah, okay. so we could just word that again. That Absolutely. In case I don't have it. I'll have a new one tomorrow. So do you have a concern leaving that in the ONF? I was curious. I, I, it was hard for me to, I, I wasn't thinking about uh, the groundhogs. I was thinking Believe it or not, when, when I see so. a lot of stormwater maintenance yeah. plans for yeah. rain gardens and bio, well, this is considered like a bio swell, even though it's just a grass yeah. swell. That is in there in, in most of the language. Yeah. Because I would think for, you know, generally normal functioning to filter, filter water and um, clean out the pollutants, you want sort of natural biota in there and you know, mammals are part of that. I didn't know that that would happen. I think it's really just if it's causing erosion yeah, or causing disturbance yeah, that's causing yeah, yeah, function, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But do you, we could clarify that. We could clarify that because I don't want us poisoning animals if there's no reason. <laughs> I guess mm -hmm. I don't want us poisoning anything. You know. Okay, I just resent it to you. Okay. So the other question that I have is, does this, does it, is there a specific grass that's supposed to be used? Because you also have a condition in here, you know, that if it's not functioning properly, then it needs to be tilled and replanted according to design specifications. And so if somebody came back to me and said it's not working, we need to redo it. And what we're, what are we supposed to plant it with? I don't know. The National Heritage and Endangered Species Program wants the fescue mix planted on that. It, on the swell. <coughs> on the swell. Okay. They want it planted everywhere. Well, except for the areas where you want the wildflower mix put in. Okay. So I don't think we have that in this file. Mm -hmm. Can you forward that one again for this? The mix that you're going to use the grass. The, the fescue mix. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a problem. I actually have a bunch of it still sitting at my house. Well, that's why you want to use it. <laughs> um, let's see. It's actually really, it's really good stuff. I wasn't sure about this part. Um, you have in there training and or written guidance information for operating and ma maintaining swell should be provided to all property owners and tenants. A copy of the O&M plan should be provided to all property owners and tenants. I mean, it's going to be part of the order, mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be recorded at the registry. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure whether this was, was really something that would be in this O&M plan. You know, it seemed as though that would be something that we might make a condition, you know, but it wasn't something that would be necessarily um, part of the O&M. But I, I can see it more, you know, when... Um, well, if you want to take it out of the O&M plan and make it a condition, yeah, that's, that's fine. just that's what I sort of. I don't have an issue with that. Um, so I guess you know I would say I don't know whether you feel comfortable uh, moving forward to closing the hearing and drafting after, after we review the order, drafting the order and closing the hearing or whether you want to see this written out again, you know, had time to look at it, you know, as revised, um, or whether you, you're okay as we move through, just think about that one, whether you want to wait until the next meeting or whether you're, you seem like you're okay with it. So the draft that I did today, again, I sent out, but again, not until late this afternoon, so. Um, no. And then obviously on behalf of my client, I would like to move forward. The revisions that are, that are being done on the on the plan are pretty minor and pretty standard. And um, some of the things I actually like, like taking one section out and putting it in the order is fine. Yeah, and so I guess if, you, if you're fine with all that, then you might just want to give direction at the end, you know, that either Matt and I work on it together to get it to something that's satisfactory. Or yeah. if you guys want to see it again, then let me know what I you want to do. I the discussion it. here. I feel fine with that. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. the things we discussed, I think so. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Well, there may be a few other minor things in there that, right. that we talk about. But um, 
All right, so again, the project is paving an existing gravel driveway that serves four existing residential lots and one new residential lot, creating a biofilter swale for stormwater runoff from the newly paved driveway. And um, you know, the findings that I drafted were that, that, this, that you know, I'm part of the boilerplate. The commission finds the existing common driveway, and I'm not sure if this is true or not, but um, is in a poor condition, and surface erosion occurs during large storms. Is that accurate? I don't remember. The surface erosion part is. Yeah, I don't know if it's in poor condition. In poor, um, it's it's a difficult to maintain. That that erosion happened every storm, and it was just running right down into the stream. Um, so the commission finds that the existing driveway has um, surface erosion occurring during large storm events. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it looks like the owners are maintaining it, but there is a definite yeah, yeah, issue. Yeah, it looks like they're, they're, they're doing a yearly maintain. Right. Yeah. Um, I was going to say that was that was Lori Stevens. I can't really speak for her, but the two of us did that walk together too. Um, and she obviously believed the paving would be more beneficial, um, just because you could see where the sediment would just run off uh, with any storm. And they did. They maintained it fairly well, and then you know they pressed and it was it was functioning. But we could see where paved might even be better. Mm -hmm. for the area it's in, especially where it crosses the water. Okay, so then I said, and the commission finds that by crowning, that by crowning the driveway during, during the pavement, the stormwater will flow into the bioculture swales, which will allow for infiltration of runoff prior to water reaching the stream. So it sounds like what you were trying to get to. I think so, yes. Far more eloquent. Well, not really. <laughs> well, not really. Um, so this is under the bylaw order. Uh, one of our resource area interests is to preserve um, and protect um, passive recreation. Mm -hmm. And so I just, under the findings, said that the commission finds that the proposed driveway improvements will not have any impact on the adjacent trail or and or trail use activities. Okay. I can't recall whether we talked about, again, security. Um, bonding escrow for this project or not. So um, I, it's from our boilerplate throw out that um, with, if you want security, it would be for the driveway improvements, um, which would be the, the, filter, you know, the, the construction of the swale. And, um, and I guess if they didn't complete the paving or something like that. You know, I think, didn't you give a figure last time from the, um, just it's that stretch from the riverfront? Yeah, uh, no, I gave that to uh, the owners, okay, because they wanted us to bond it. I'm, I'm, okay, I mean, we're not posting cash for that, so we'd be bonded no matter what, okay? And, and quite frankly, I, I, I think that's a lot of money to bond, okay? Well, I don't think we have got a figure. <clears throat> this, is for, this is for the entire driveway pavement? No, the just for that section, it's under 200 area. foot. Yeah, that's all I can tell you what it is. 10, 12, 12. It's probably four, that's probably four, four thousand bucks right there. Right. Yeah. And um, does that include the swales? Yeah. So we have a requirement in our bylaw that you provide the security and they provide us the details for it. So we do need to get that information, you know, so before we'll accept that amount. Okay, and I, I guess I'm going to is, so that's going to be one and a half times or two and a half one times. One and a half. Okay, I mean, I, 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 I'd like to request that you waive that. Well, let me just read the bylaw requirement. Performance guarantees and security is part of a wetland bylaw order issued by this under this bylaw. Except for orders conditions 
issued for work being performed or contracted by any department or agency of the town. And in addition to any security required by any other municipal or state agency, the commission may require that the performance and observation of the conditions imposed here under be whole, secured wholly or in part by security in the form of a bank check or personal check made payable to the town of Bolton and deposited with the town of Bolton in a non-interest account. Permittees shall submit their estimates of what the required improvements within the adjacent upland resource area and wetland resource areas will cost, including materials and labor, and preferably with contractor bids to perform the work. The commission shall impose a margin of safety over and above the estimates to cover unforeseen circumstances, municipal administrative costs, municipal wage rate, and bidding costs and inflation. The commission shall use the rate of one and a half times the estimate for all work related to construction. The commission at its discretion may allow partial or complete release of funds as sections of the project are completed. The commission has the right not to require, not to release until it's finished and a certificate of compliance is issued. Security shall be released, uh, shall be released to the commission, shall be released to the commission so that the town can complete required improvements or meet conditions upon certification um, that required any improvements and conditions that have not been completed on time or to satisfactory standard as defined by the commission. So it sounds like you may um, require. Did you want to say? Just say we may require. <laughs> yes. Now uh, I would think in. But I would say it's been a standard. standard it's, it's yeah, it's, it's really a precedent thing. Um, but it does say we we can look at different aspects of it. I would say for me, as far as the surety goes. It wouldn't be so much on the pavings, it would be the swales, because that's what the town would really have to step in and fix. And if it doesn't get paved, it doesn't get paved, whatever. Stop it now. Uh, well, well, no. I guess the question is, is I'm not sh and you can tell me if you know, but again, without seeing a contractor's bid for it, if they need to take out the bottom, you know, several layers, right? right and then right, recompact yeah, no. and regrade it. And if the work stopped at a phase of that, may not be the paving the, you know right, but it right. may be a phase of that work then and in and, and you and you know bob walked away and the homeowner said i'm not dealing with it you know and the commission had to step in to stop erosion and stop right. anything from it happening and, and the decision was that to, to get it to final pavement was the was the way to yes, you know you'd, right. you'd still have to follow all those steps I, I i guess i'd respond to that by saying this is not a project that's going to take Okay, a year to do it. Somebody's going to come in there, they're going to grade it, they're going to pay it. Okay, it's not going to be. Sure. Okay, nobody's going to start it unless they're ready to finish it. Um, okay, it's not so you grade it one, one week and maybe. wait until okay, you right. do it again. Right. So I guess I would respectfully just ask again, okay, that you waive that. Is that even with the swale to just install all that down? I mean, it's basically just a digging down and grading over and... Yeah, I mean, I, okay, I mean, it's so minor. But you get the money back, too. Yeah. That's the other oh, thing. yeah. Well, yeah. As, soon as, it, the, as soon as it's done, no, you I'm, know, and the as-built information is provided, so it's not like we're holding it for, you know, longer, like with the plantings. I understand. It's it's It gets to be an economic burden for stuff like that. You know, the paper wants to get paid the day that he's done. Okay, he can't tear up the pavement. Okay, so you know it's 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 more a uh, you know I, I I would I I would suggest to you this if this isn't paid by a certain date, a bond would be required. Okay. Um, okay. Well, if it isn't paid by that date because you walk away, yeah, so, so we can't get a bond from you. Yeah. It's okay, but if it isn't paid, it means nobody's done anything. Mm -hmm. with it. Right. Well, no, yeah. I see what you're saying. Right. What you're yeah. saying. right. Yeah. Right. That you're only going to start if you can finish. Right. But um, I, you know, I mean, we can see what everybody else thinks, and I, 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 yeah. I do feel for it. But it's it's just one of those pressing things that everybody has to lay it down. Yeah. Yeah. If the town has to pay for it, I'm a Bolton taxpayer. I don't want to pay for it. If a contractor well, yeah. wants to do it, well, yeah. you yeah. put up the money well, just in case. And I think that we should have this uh, conversation. Go ahead, please. You 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 wouldn't pay it. What? You no, 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 but not. like the, the grass swells. No, I think that's right. I, no, I, I would not. And I would not, not, not that. That, and, and I, you know, I'm not a contractor. Yeah. And I don't disagree that you're probably, it's, it's a one day job. <laughs> but there are lots of jobs that start and don't get finished, even one day jobs. Like things happen, there's probably, your guys go, they start digging up, there's a problem. You argue with them, they want more money, they say, we're walking off, you're done. The day you started it is the day it's done, 
they want more money, you don't have more money, you walk away, then the town's going to deal with it. But it's a pain, but, but that's why these rules are there. But theoretically, if I post a bond, then you're right. going to pay them to right. right. Because you'd have to go do it. Right. And there may be reason yeah. that the commission would have to do yeah. it. There may be. I mean, and I don't think that's necessarily a one-day job there. I mean, the paving jobs that I see are typically not just one day, and they're smaller driveways than that. Right, well. right. No, you know, it's not the, the amount of time for the day. That's why I was just using the yeah. one-day thing. That even if it's a quick project, it might not get finished. No, I'm know? talking about the grading, okay? Well, right. Okay, you know, so... so Okay, the grading isn't anything but running the machine right. all over it. Right, okay, right. They come you in, flat and regrade. Right. right. Okay, they come in and they do that the next day, or, or, yeah. or that day, and go do the top the next day. Well, that's why I was trying to see yeah. if we could separate, and again, other people might have other ideas, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's fine. I was trying to think if we could separate out the things that the town would really need to do, basically the swales, and any of the water flow issues, that's where we'd have to really step in and do something. The paving. Maybe so, maybe not. Like you said, if it, if it gets cut down, maybe we have to build it back up. Maybe we have to pave it. Um, but it's more some of those other things that I'm worried about along the way. It's, it's everything they're doing every year. Right. They, okay, they bring a load of gravel in and they spread it out. That's that's what it amounts to. Right. Okay, that's, that is the great. We, we do this to protect the town's no, resources. And, and we it's difficult for us to assign a probability. Mm -hmm. To, to the risk. No, I understand. Right. But, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at your bylaw and I'm requesting it, okay, yeah. that you, you may, okay, which means you may not, okay, you know, depending on what side of the... Right. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable making an hey, exception in this case. We've never made an exception before and I don't want to set that precedent. So. Yes, we may, but we haven't. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. I, I tend to fall the same way that, you know, if I, I if we did it for you, we'd really have to start doing it for everybody. Uh, and we just try to stay consistent. So are we talking about buying the asphalt too? I don't know. That, I mean, that's what I, like I said. I'd be more than willing to discuss to see, you know, without getting too complicated, if we could break out certain aspects and try to get a good price on those. But others might be more concerned with the whole project. You know, I, I, don't think think we're, I don't think we're bound to replace what's there with a paved driveway. But in the event that it's disrupted in the midst of, of, mm -hmm. uh, of of excavation, we would need to be able to restore it to at least its current. <coughs> yeah, well, well, can I just say, in, in just in terms of your consistency factor, you have required the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You haven't broken yeah. it down to yeah. those minor steps, and we don't have that breakdown mm -hmm. at this point either. Um, That's true. You know, you have required it to include those parts because, again, you don't know. Right. You're right. Looking for it. Right. Um, well, here's the. It's a shared driveway, right? Is it part of like it's an HMI? Right? It's a common driveway. Okay. Well, I was trying to think if it reverts, if the OOC reverts to the homeowners. It is if, being it's, if it's on the. Mr. Pace is the applicant, but yeah. all the homeowners are going to be responsible for this order conditions. All right. So it doesn't. Okay. It affects all the properties. Yeah, they're all shared equally. Right. right. So and if, if the space had to step out, you know, for whatever reason, right. you couldn't finish it because we drove you insane. Um, fair, fair does it then go? Is it then on to the homeowners? Do they then need to come up with a new contract or somehow provide the work themselves? I'm trying to think what's because it's not a town road, it is a common driveway. Right. Would the town need to step in and fix it, or, or would the town be able to go to the homeowners and say, hey, you need to fix it? You well, that's going to be the first course of action. Right. But if there was something that we decided we needed to immediately do, and those homeowners all said, no, we're not doing it, the deal was, right. you know, the, the developer was going to do it. You know, and they they don't want to do it. That's that's I guess where I would be. It's not like, I mean, they all want it to be done, but they're doing it because he wants to build the other lot. You know, right. Otherwise, they probably right. were going to do it. Do it. Well, I did you know. talk with them. It sounded like it was something they talked about. Right, right, right. Because of those erosion issues, yeah. Uh, yeah. they wanted to clear those yeah. up. But yeah. I mean, I hear what others have to think. Can go either way. Um, yeah, I, I, I think we should stick with what we've been doing. I don't really feel comfortable making an exception here. I'm not requiring the whole thing. But yeah, I I'm one you consistent. Yeah. And we shouldn't try to break it out. I think we should just do our own thing, which is paving and the swales, which is consistent. So you're talking about the 200 foot area? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and then I guess I would request. And if that's the case and everybody's aware that there's a precedent and I realize it does say may in there, so I'm not asking you to weigh that. 
What about the type of surety? Why can't I put a bond up? What can insurance company bonds? Our town, the, 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 the town doesn't accept it that way. Okay, letter of credit? No. Not for amounts that we're talking about. The commission has talked with um, the town administrator, the town treasurer in the past, and that's why it was put in the bylaw the way it was about um, the check, because the commission has to be able to get to the funds without having to go through the bank determining maybe they'll release it, maybe they won't. Maybe it's an emergency, maybe it isn't. And um, the letter of credit if you wanted to go through a letter of credit, it would be a whole legal issue. Like the, the way that it would have to be formed and drafted and reviewed would be more work than I think you'd probably be looking to do. Only from what I've seen, what town council has reviewed with us on, on another one, which has been a long time ago, but it was pretty um, intense. Okay, then can we put in the minutes that as soon as this pavement is done, this particular bond can be released? Because it, it's a lot of money. Well, I think you have to provide the as-built information. That's the standard in the bylaw. Well, that would be complete. And okay, and as far okay. as the paving, I, I want to have the money to pay to pay the con contract. No, I get that. I get that. I'm just, again, it's it. The standard is mm -hmm. that when we get the, the certificate of co when we get the as-built information, mm -hmm. and we're satisfied with it. So, I would just to take your words and say not exactly that. Yeah. You know that that's what the the standard requirements. Um, this may be out of um, order as well, but the plans are stamped by a sanitarian. And so I just wonder whether um, that's sufficient for, like, for the design of this. You? I have my copy with me. He, he is an engineer. I uh, don't know why he used the sanitary stamp, but he's been stamping all the other plans that you've approved before. I just never had seen it with the sanitary one. I just would be more comfortable if it was his other stamp or somebody else. With no, him. I'll talk to him about it. It's not a problem. Just because I'm just throwing it up now because if we're asking for as built information, again, you know, who are we getting as built information from is important. And I do, I do know that. Um, you know, Jerry's done other work, but I don't remember whether it's just been the sanitary aspect. Or my, I didn't know whether no. Mark Gerard stamped some of them, and you know, I didn't have a chance to look back at those. I, I don't remember either. I think I think Jerry's been stamping on them. Yeah. He's 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 got a septic of stamp and probably a P. Okay, so you will then provide us with uh, the cost estimate. That's yeah. what we're talking about. didn't type into here but I thought had thought about it was you know did we want to have the work done during dry conditions you know, that it's not um, you know we're not in the throes of expecting a storm while the work is occurring yeah. seems to make sense yeah. you don't, wouldn't have a problem with that um, yeah, and then I really just have you know that the homeowners will comply with the O&M plan and that that would run with a certificate of compliance will be recorded with the order and um, I guess the only other thing I had in as a special condition um, was and I don't know Matt if you have an opinion whether there's any other um, temporary best management practices that need to be utilized during this like really no because that, whether there's that any would be check dams or anything until the swale stabilized or I don't think a check dam would be counterproductive in that area it's too flat it's too confined oh 
It's too confined to, well, there are areas that are too flat, but it's too confined for me for check dams. Usually when I do check dams, I like them on wider swales, steeper areas. Mm -hmm. For example, when Lemonster capped their landfill, they had a whole series of bio swells that went like this, and it was down a steep hill. Mm -hmm. So check dams were appropriate in that instance. I just think it's too confined. It may cause more problems than what it solves. That was why I had the O&M plan. Part of that O&M plan called for during construction and just after construction to watch for stabilization. So the contractor is going to have to watch it while it's being built to make sure that everything sure stays stable. Got that part out of it. Maybe, maybe when we talk, you can point out what you think was during construction. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can even add that section in there, if, you know, to make it more clear. Or we can just add it in the order. Yeah, add it in the order. That's fine. To clarify during construction, if there's any special O and M. Okay. Otherwise, I don't really have anything other than the standard. And then just if they can get it stamped by the engineer, that would be probably preferable. But, you know, so yeah, that's, 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 that's easy, that's easy enough that. to get done. Okay. Um, so the conditions under the Wetlands Protection Act would be similar except for the um, security. Unless anybody else has any other thoughts. So then you could make a motion to close and issue the ordinance discussed. All right, so I make a motion, a motion that we close the hearing and issue the order of conditions as discussed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Scouts would be rowing and observe that they were that the lines of sight were in fact blocked by trees in either direction to some extent. And we, we discussed what that extent meant with some lack of finality. Yeah. yeah. Right. So there is, um, I guess, to the well, I'm going to sort of give it. Oh, I saw it. I know you guys can but add, add anyone. I thought to the left, um, that clump of birch 
did need to come out to open up, you know, the line of vision over there, and as well as the the brush. I don't know if you necessarily needed to take that out for vision, but uh, um, there were a lot of invasive plants in there anyway, so that would be fine with me if you took those out. So that's the left side. On the right side, um, the biggest obstruction was that even bigger clump of birch that kind of leaned over into the pond. Um, and it, it looked to me like if that was taken out, if that would the pond to your line of view, not, not necessarily the whole pond, but I thought that taking out the remaining trees would add a small amount of pond to your, and, and I, I think we need to discuss whether, whether, I mean, the impact of taking out those trees versus the, um, in the, the, the brush on that side, on the right side, as you're facing the pond, um, there's a lot of sweet pepper bush, which is a nice native plant, and that was right near the bir birch, unfortunately, because the birch is what looks like it really needs to come out. The rest of it, though, there's a lot of Japanese knotweed, which none of us would want there anyway, native invasive plant. Thank you. <laughs> so um, that's where we were. With, that's how I, I don't know, want to add anything? So. If you if you had your way, how many trees total do you think you're taking out that? Something like nine trees total on both sides? Uh, was all the way the only reason why I say yes is because I never <coughs> actually counted how many. We just went from one line to the other. Right. And you when you do go to the right, there are quite a few trees in there. Right. And it, it could be as many as nine, and it, it could be a few more than that. I'm not 100% sure of that. I know that there's one tree in there that's you know, it's a tree, but it's grown up three or four times. So right. it's, you know, it is one tree, but yeah, it, it looks right. like it's more than one, you know. Um, so I think the trees are definitely impacting the safety of the kids. And I don't have an issue with them taking the trees down. Well, can I ask a question? Because I didn't do the second thing. If they move the tower, could they have other visibility? Or is that a visibility? Only if they moved it up. <laughs> yeah, or maybe yeah, towards like well. when it gets too close. Yeah, I, I don't. How far is it from the edge of the pond? Mm -hmm. I think we're 25 like, feet, maybe. We're about 30 feet. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we have issues with the trees coming down, we don't want all the trees taking it. Could we say that maybe they could do some additional plantings elsewhere that wouldn't affect the pond area, sight lines? Well, I mean, that's what's good. We can get to mitigation. I was. Um, you know, in terms of minimizing the impact to begin with, I was thinking myself of just taking out on the right side. On the left side, I think we're on the same page. Left side, take out the club of birch and all the uh, and all the invasive stuff. Anyway, the right side, it seemed to me that just taking out the big clump of birch would open up so much of the pond, and maybe for the little bit of pond that you couldn't see, you put some a rope there or something, and that you know is delineates what's off limits to the kids for voting. I don't know, because it didn't look like, you know, to take down that many trees, eight or nine, it didn't seem like you gained very much of the pond, is what my view was. You gained a lot of the pond by taking out the one clump of birch, but not by taking out the remaining trees. Now, as, as for mitigation, I, I, I imagine that uh, years ago, when they first set the, the camp up, that those trees weren't there. And that they worked their lines of sight. And that the fact that the trees grew there isn't something that they should have to mitigate for. Like well, the trees were probably there first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they were there. Those trees. It was <laughs> private property until the Boy Scouts oh, right. yeah. Then, then so they were probably right those trees out too. Yeah. That may or may not be true. I, I, I don't think we can look at it historically. I, yeah, I think yeah. we, we need to look at what the habitat value is now of the things that they want to take out, and or the wetland value, all the different values that we're supposed to protect. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions that I was asking Janet this morning, because again, I didn't go there, but I can't, were you going to stump it? I can't remember if you just were leaving the stumps, right? Okay, so one of the questions I asked was, was there any impact to bank with the removal of the vegetation there? was the bank itself impacted because one of the research areas is bank so i'm just trying to evaluate are you talking about 
Um, are, you, are you talking about bordering vegetated wetland at all here? Are you talking about bank or are you talking about only buffer zone or adjacent upland resource area? Was it looked at for for wetland vegetation? Well, so I'm not, I'm not because then because then you have a you know a different resource. Area. Right. I'm not entirely clear on. Well, there were so many invasive plants there to begin right. with that it's hard to tell. Exactly. On the right side, you have the sweet pepper bush. I don't know if that's an obligate wetland. I'd have to look at this. Probably back wet or something. So, yeah. You know, it's, but maybe an obligate. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm not clear on the distinction between a bank, a bordering vegetated wetland. And well, so bordering, you have to be bordering on a water body, which would have a bank, typically, a stream um, or a pond or a lake or, you know, um, Marsh, you know, something the invasives go right to the water edge. Yeah. Well, but so the, the invasives, you, when you're doing the, your delineation, you're looking at all the cover. You're looking at your, your ground cover, you're looking at your shrub layer, you're looking at your canopy. And you have to look at all of that to determine whether or not it's, you know, the vegetation is, um, is would be consistent with boring vegetated wetland. So is that if it's not consistent with bordering vegetated wetland, then, then you you're probably just calling no. Well, the bank is the, the bank is really going to be the edge of the shoreline. That Regardless is, of your, you okay, know, between okay. where the water, you know, it goes low and where it goes high. Yeah. Right. And so if they weren't taking out the stumps, then they, they, there was probably less likelihood that they're having some impact to the bank with the, okay. with the cutting. So that's what I was just trying okay. to establish. Um, and so if there's if the vegetation wasn't wetland vegetation right. or at least predominantly wetland vegetation right. and I don't it doesn't sound like you looked at soil so we don't know what the soils look like but I'm going to presume they're sort of sandy soils over there. Yeah, and, and, I don't and know whether you'd see much indication of high We were talking about taking all the brush out and not taking out the stumps and then we talked about continually to mow it. So it wasn't like we're going in there with a backhoe and we're going to tear it. You know, I use the word tear, take everything out from the from the pond back the 10 feet we're looking for. Um, it was a, a clear cut and then a, a continual to mow it because we talked about mowing it. What are we going to do with it when it gets taken out? So it's not ripped out with backhoe. It's taken out, it's cut down, and then it's continually mowed. So that's not going to grow back to the point where you're going to see us in two or three years and do this all over. You know I mean? But just for in terms of the resource area impact, I think you have to know what you're dealing with. So yes, I, I'm not really sure because, like I said, the invasives are there to confuse everything. But you did have the pepper bush and then white ash. At least one of the trees was white ash on the right hand side beyond the birch. Mm -hmm. Not and a terribly healthy white ash. Well, we're well, no, 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 still looking at the. Uh, we're looking at vegetation to try to determine what type of habitat it is. Not, not in terms of the health of the tree. You know I mean? I was, well, something ash is, is growing successfully, that's one thing. No, no, but ash yeah. gets hit by diseases. It doesn't, if it's not growing well, it doesn't mean that it's not a wetland. You know what I mean? It's just, um, I, again, ash is probably facultative. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just don't know if there's like native vegetation there left to, to determine whether... Well, that's why you would look at other things. So uh, I'm just asking you because yeah. I didn't do the same, so I don't know. And it's uh, with the sandy soils, it's harder to tell, yeah. you know, a little bit, you know, where, where your hydric soils are, unless it wasn't, unless it was clear. But if we didn't do a, a soil borrowing, we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like you think you think that it wasn't a, there wasn't bordering vegetated wetland of what they wanted to take out, because again, that's different how you treat it in terms of mitigation, in terms of you know consideration of impact. Mm -hmm. I don't know, <laughs> honestly. Uh, so. Then um, I guess let me just throw out the question as to whether you think you would be able to make a finding one way of a negative determination or make a positive determination on this. I don't think we could make a negative determination. I mean, it's, we're taking out vegetation right next, right up to the edge of the water. How so there's an be? impact. Yeah. How could there not be? Well, I'm just asking. I'm just saying, yeah. could you make a finding one way or another? So, because if if you feel as though you, they would need to do a notice of intent, then maybe they would have to. If, then they would have to provide that information, whether there's a border oh, actually well in there or not. You know, they, they would have to identify the resource area impact a little bit more. They're just they filed a request for determination right, to right, determine right. whether or not they need to file a notice yeah. of intent, right. or whether or not the work isn't going to have any impact. So, yeah. if you think there's going to be impact, short yeah. or long term, then the presumption would be that you make a positive determination and then they'd come back with the information that you might need. Yeah, I don't see how there could not be impact if you take that vegetation right up to the edge of the water. How could that not be? Right. Yeah, there's, there's definitely impact. Yeah. Um, 
I would say too, though. That I, I mean, I see. I think one of your original uh, reasons you came in is, is safety issues of of the yeah. you know, how it stands. And as a parent, I see that. At the end of the day, I mean, I think it all has to come out. Not all, but. The vast majority has to come out. Like you can tell kids not to paddle here or there, but they're gonna do it. Even good kids, kids first time in their canoe, it's not the most stable thing. Like as a parent, yeah, I, I want it all out. Like if yeah. that's their area, I mean, I could see from up in that tower what you could see and what you couldn't. Right, if it gets to that point, then we need to talk about mitigation. I don't feel like that's children's what, safety is not our jurisdiction. I mean, that's- Well, I think children's safety is more important than anything else we're doing, right? I mean. I mean, I know something you can't look at. But, but what I, I guess what no, what I was saying is, perhaps we should get to mitigation. I mean, we can we can talk through the whole thing too. But honestly, at the end of the day, I, I mean, if they want to see it come out, I can understand why it would need to come out. It really is a kid safety issue. It's hard to argue against that. We can, but at the end of the day, I think it's got to come out, and we should probably just start talking about is there a mitigation or, or how can we minimize. I just well, I don't want you guys to we miss were, anything. If anybody's kids well, are there, we I want you to see whether. it 120 percent. Right. I thought we were here to determine whether. Do you feel that you could issue a negative determination that you want to? No. Okay. I, so I, I think so you just out. want to do it for discussion purposes, so yeah. that if they're going to come back with a notice of intent, they would know what you'd be looking for. Yeah. For well, it was to say if we're, I mean, just to discuss some of those key points where. I, I, I understand, I was looking at, because we were trying to look at, if you remove this and leave this, you know, could yeah. we do this and what can you see? And I just keep going through in my head going, you know, as a parent, if I couldn't see a six foot section, I would be freaked if there were 20 kids in the water. It would, I would right. lose my mind. Brian, I can appreciate that. I just don't think we're up to that. I think we need okay. to decide whether we're issuing a positive or negative determination. And, If we decide to issue a negative, uh, Evaluation, then the rest of it is moved. Right. If we exactly. if we decide to issue a positive one, then we come back. Then we'll have a right, discussion. Right. right. Uh, but there's definitely well, for me at least, there, there's definitely an impact. So I mean, there's no. It's hard to do the name. I mean, there's definitely an impact because it goes right up. You know, you're going to have to go right up to the bank. So it sounds like what I'm hearing is that you think that there's an impact, but you also see the need from the camp safety standpoint, and that you would recommend they go forward with a notice of intent to address the issues. Right. And me personally, yes. That's, I mean, that's what it that sounds like. Sums yes. 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 I, I concur. Okay. So did you follow what we're saying? Mark is going to say there's questions too. Mark Remington, would you like to speak? Uh, yes, Madam Chairman. <laughs> is this an issue that could be handled with boys that would have an area that the canoes couldn't go past? Again, I don't think we're at that point. I think we're at the point where we're okay. trying to determine whether um, there's, impact. there's impact or not. And we, we just have to I get just to know everybody brought, brought up boys. We'll get yeah. there. We'll and get the boy scouts well, the, of America. The rope off <laughs> area that you yeah. were talking about, yeah. rope off that end of the park. Yeah. We have, you know, you get these kids go out in the boats and everything, and we have a roped off swimming area. You didn't see yeah. it the other day because the docks yeah. are floating to get them away from mm -hmm. the shore. And, and when you put the rope around in the swimming area, they see a friend in there, they're rowing closer, 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 next thing you know, they're in the ropes. Yep. So we gotta get them out of there all the time, boats don't belong in there. So if they're doing that, yep. what's gonna keep them well, from doing it down the end of the pond yeah. as well? I mean, we'll that's, we'll you know. We're either gonna go, go there or we're not gonna go there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just figured I'd yeah. Yeah. put that in there just yeah. to, yeah. you know. We'll yeah. I think we're not gonna go there yet. <laughs> I think we're making a positive determination is what we're doing now, correct? Yeah. Yes. So we okay. Have, so then you need a motion. Okay. And so I'd like um, to make a motion. That we well, let me just look at the different <laughs> positives just so that we get it right. So you, the the choices are, um, and there's a lot of them. <laughs> the positive um, one: the area described in reference plans is an area subject to protection under the Act. Removing, filling, dredging, or altering of the area requires the filing of a notice of intent. I don't know that they, well, I guess they gave a description of the area, so probably one would apply. The boundary delineations, which they didn't give us boundary delineations, so those wouldn't be, so two doesn't apply. Um, three, the work described on the reference plans and documents is within an area subject protection under the Act and will remove fill for all of that area. Therefore, the, re the work requires the filing notice of intent. So, Actually, that's what I think in his application he asked for. Let me double check. Were you looking at the application you filed? Okay, so you did ask area and whether, uh, oh, you didn't check work. 
So you would really ask them under the area. So that would be number one. And also under the bylaw would be number five. The area and or work described on the reference plans is subject to the, the bylaw. Okay. Let me just check if there's, there's six and seven here too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, and then there's an option of six if it's applicable just to the bylaw, but not to the Wellness Act, and that's not the case here. And seven is if a notice of intent is fired for work in the riverfront area, and this is not. So, okay, one and I five. think one and five. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion that we make a positive determination. Um, I guess it's what do I call this? B one and B five, because well, the po those are all the positives. So just positive determination one and five. Okay, go ahead and turn it. Okay, do I have to read these out? No, no. Okay. Okay, so we already, I already did. <laughs> All right, make a motion that we make a positive determination. Um, one and five. One and five. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so. I'm going to fill that in. Um, so you, either Rick or Dale or Who's the other guy? Hank. 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 You know, somebody can work with us on getting the notice of intent application and get all that, you know, together so we don't have time before the next season opening. Sure. Right. Okay. Thank you. You know, and it sounds like. You might just try to see whether or not on the right-hand side, especially at least Janet was thinking, you know, is there a way to cordon that off? And then for mitigation, you know, again, we haven't talked about it, but usually the mitigation is commensurate with that, that alteration. So if you're taking out that much vegetation, some of the mitigation might be considered, um, you know, taking, getting rid of the invasive, the invasive plants, mm -hmm. you know, so that being a little bit more specific about how you're going to take care of those, whether it's the mowing or you know, doing any other um, pulling or anything like that. By couldn't you not, do you mean making part of the lake inaccessible to, to the kids? Well, if that, if that was an option, I mean, <coughs> you could just look at it. They, they need to look at alternatives. A map would be right. good so that we can look at Yeah, you need to have some kind of a map, and you may, it may need it delineated whether or not, evaluated whether it's a bordering vegetation well or not. So I, I hope so one of keep the, signing those. I hope one of the uh, outcomes isn't that we end up restricting them. Yeah, but it's their job to look at alternatives. And to present them, I'm just giving them some of the you're stating some of the ideas, and then if you if you want, you may look into you know can you <coughs> overplant where the knotweed is whether after a certain time, like if you mowed it for a number of years and you got rid of it, you know could you overplant it with something low growing, mm. you know that wouldn't be. In some cases, what's growing there now isn't too high. On the right-hand side, you saw where the fishing dock is. That's too high. On the other side, the trees were gone. If those weeds were still there, no weeds, I call them, whatever. Um, that might not be that bad a deal, but if we're going to get rid of those invasive weeds, why should we let them come back again? You know what yeah. I mean? So but it's, and then the, the, other, the, other thing that, the other thing that you other have to things, think about, exactly. right, yes. so the other things that you think about is, you know, the trees are overhanging the pond, so they're shading the pond. You know, are there fisheries sure. that are yeah. occurring, fish mm -hmm. nesting areas that are occurring in that area? So, you know, what could you do to mitigate for that to make sure that they're not going to be impacted? And maybe they're not at all, but is that this is the kind of stuff that, you know, should be evaluated a lot. Do, do, do you all want Further around the pond? They don't almost yeah, all right, the pond. Exactly. All so the, right, except what you're other than the town's the person's park. park. So the, oh. it would be possible to plant yeah, trees yeah. Exactly. in other places. Mm -hmm. In other places that are not blocking the view mm -hmm. that would restore overhanging habitat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. that's the kind of mitigation that could be done. So you'd be looking for like one tree per tree that we take out or what? Like for like. Generally, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's square foot or how many square yards you're you're uh, mm -hmm. disturbing, you know, replanting X amount of square yards. But usually with trees, it's a tree for tree. Okay, just way an idea. Okay. Yeah, back to you saying we want to plant three, and you're looking for eight or ten. Or yeah, yeah. We, don't and have we have two. It's not damage. Yeah, how do you define it? You got one clump. One clump. It could be less. Too. <laughs> 
to say, I mean, we're usually reasonable to where if it's nine and you're proposing replanting eight in the space, where I'm going, you got to stick a ninth one in there, you know, somehow fit it in, you know, if it, if it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you had talked to an arborist originally, right? Yes. When, so, yeah. I mean, you might talk to them again about what would be appropriate for sizing, spacing, that kind of detail that you might want some guidance from. Sure. Someone. So I will um, mail this out to you, okay. um, and then you know if you want to talk about, I can email you the forms, or, or maybe Hank already has them. I don't when he first met with me. <coughs> so. Email, you yeah. should email, yeah, okay. definitely. To who? To Rick? Yeah, why don't you send it to Rick? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll see you again. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. We're basically. So I think we want to get back to the. Yeah, I think we want to recap that. I think if there's this much to recap. Um, Been two articles and two papers. I know. So to uh, you and Brian, both attendants, like what's your name? Yes. And I talked to Carol ahead of time about some of her concerns, depending or things that we need to address going forward. Um, I was able to bring them up, but I didn't really get any answers. Uh, Kate Hogan was here, which was great. Only when I started to bring up that you, Carol had proposed, because it would be very difficult on her time if for her to follow the full FERC process. We have the full process, and I believe I got it nine times where we can interject, including in the pre-filing process. And the Suckman thought that was incorrect. And we're very insistent. They didn't think we could uh, it have any say in the pre-filing process. No, that's incorrect. We really need to stay on top of where we are in the pre-filing mm -hmm. process. Uh, one of our lawyers, who might happen to be a swore that we could not interject in the pre-filing process. Really? To somebody who was like, let's get going on this. It was very frustrating along those lines. Uh, but to bring up to Don about possibly either creating either a subcommittee or an ad hoc committee or, or even just a working group to follow the full FERC process. And it's very difficult to say, well, you know, it's not a full-time job, but it could be a huge chunk of her job said, you know, Carol, you need to follow this. Um, the same thing with Don. Don's on top of a lot of things for the town, but Don works nine to five. You know, he doesn't work, well, he works nights and weekends, but, you know, he only has so many hours. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not doing this as his passion. You know, we can't give him eight billion things to do. So. Carol had brought up, you know, do we need to form a committee or, or should there be something formed? Um, did pose that question. And in part, I think there's some people with other expertise uh, beyond yeah, what I would have. Or, you know, yeah, there's, you know, we, we know we've talked with Gary um, and, um, you know, and there's, uh, there's other people who have become much more informed than, than I feel like I am about the whole process, you know, so certainly there'd be, if you worked in a group, you know, you, you wouldn't have to do it all. You know, there'd be other hands right. that could you know, have draft something or review what you drafted or, you know. It was a, it was a very smart idea and, yeah. like, and I even had, I think I brought that up with them too, that how do we use our best people, you know, to their, mm -hmm. to their strengths and can we work something like this out. Um, representative, and I, was, I had to go through a few other things too, Representative Hogan was here, she had a chance to speak, which was really nice, but it kind of, that discussion kind of stopped at that point and I don't think we ever get back to it. Um, so the there needs one, to be some follow-up? There needs to, to see if we're doing that. I'm trying to see what I can do, and I know the no frack gas people are doing things, but as I kind of mentioned earlier, we really have to do things independently of them. It's great to inform them what we're doing. I want to hear what they're doing, but we really need to work independently. Uh, just down the road, it might be a good thing. Um, I also mentioned to them, and this was another cow brought which was a really good one, that we may need money down the road to survey that land ourselves. The question has come up, does it make sense for us to go to pay somebody professionally to survey all that land and, and like you've done great work with animals already um, just along those same lines. You really catalog what's there. So we have that going forward um, as we engage with FERC or even depending on who, at what point in time we can interject. Um, we would need money for that coming up in their budget meeting. And I mentioned that to them at the end, and, and they made note of that, too. They, they could understand that one. Um, it's somewhat difficult. I've talked to them a lot about some of the stuff we got at MAC. Uh, Carol was yeah. there. It was just, yeah, it was me, you, and Bob. Um, they were really good, MACC, you know, saying, you know, if you want to fight it, fight it. They really couldn't have an opinion yet because they weren't asked officially to have an opinion. Um, 
you know, saying no is great, which is fantastic, but at the same time, what you should be doing is trying to protect yourselves in case it does go forward. Um, of course, learning where you can step in and interject, you know, surveying, seeing what you have there. Um, but insisting, well, trying to insist, trying to push your legislators to insist for, to put certain conditions on anything that they give to Kinder Morgan. Um, t -t 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 oh, one was Article 97 land, um, and I think that's what Kate Hogan took over. Um, we can ask for, to recommend or require uh, that they respect state law for Article 97, which is the, the trust in the state land, well, what's it, uh, land held in trust? Mm -hmm. Um, it requires a two-thirds vote of the legislature, legislature to overturn that. Um, and where it would come into play with FERC is, is usually they would already have, you know, the process was going to go through, but the state legislature would at least be able to look at it and impose conditions, or in some cases, in time to case you thought this was true too, they'll kick it back to the towns and say, well, what we need you to do is work with the town's oh. conservation commission, see what they have for orders. And then you know maybe that's the one right, we, we we adopted the state as, as far as she was going to go. Yeah, I, <coughs> because I mean the way the state process and we put this in the questions that we submitted to the selectmen. I don't think they got asked, so we didn't really get into discussion on them. But was you know the the, the process under Article ninety seven that from the executive office of environmental affairs they you know they have a requirement that there's compensation whether it's land of equal value yeah. or yeah. you know there's monetary um, value that's given so again I don't know how far Kate was thinking that they would push on that kind of thing but that would certainly be um, appropriate to ask for yeah yeah um, and along those same lines again back to, uh, it, it was just asking for to, to include the conditions and certificate that requires compliance with MISA mass wildlife protection just basically all the state laws mm -hmm. and which which supersede the local laws, but would kind of bring us more into play where, and it was brought up back too, that um, you know, oftentimes these pipelines go through and they, they have to do a 100 foot wide clear cut. And it's a real process how they, they line it all in and then they keep, you know, where basically 50 foot wide swath going through. But they said, you know, sometimes you can go and it, you know, almost looks like a golf course. You'll have your conservation land, you'll have this straight, flat, like dog like planes going through, and they have to keep them clear trees and other things yeah. and they have to keep it clear but there are certain things you can do especially with endangered wildlife to put in condition to, to have them build in you know just some topography just some drops and swells and put some boulders on and it actually gives some movement you know something other than a golf course like yeah. flat and straight the whole way now there are other right of ways which may be available Correct. for instance along the interstate highways which is yeah. something that Kate does support. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, you know, everybody knew we talked. That's more, that's part yes. of the process is suggesting those. Um, yes. But what we and where we're at now meets my them. most important concern, which is getting it out of conservation area. Right, right, right. Uh, and where we're at right now is, is yeah. following their process and being able to interject in their process at right. certain times to say they're supposed to pro you know provide alternate routes. Where's right. their studies on alternate routes? Right. Right. Why did they shoot down on the altar right. I think Larry's point on the first meeting that I went to, I only went to one meeting, that was the one, the Selectman's meeting, when they had the, um, the Tennessee Gas Pipeline people there. Oh, yes, yeah. Larry made a good yeah. point was that at the very end of the meeting is that people in this town didn't work hard to protect all this land just to give you an easy pass mm -hmm. to, yeah. to put your pipeline in. So you need to look at other alternatives. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, and that's then you know, if you look at the no frack gas, there's a few real big pillars where you can attack them, and that's one of them too. Is is those alternate pipelines, and where are the alternate plans, and why aren't they feasible? Um, but for the purposes of talking to the um, to the second the other night, it was just can we insist upon that? I mean, it's it's a no. We don't want this. We want to interject in the process and say no. We don't want this. But these are some of the other things we're going to ask for, to say, well, if you're going to force this upon us, the least you can do is right. you know, make them subservient to mass wildlife protection. Um, yeah. uh, well, as part of that, sorry, I, I just okay. interrupted, but it was um, Mass General Law, is it Chapter 44, Section 53G is the one I can never remember. Um, 4453G is the one that allows us to charge a corporation for the work. So they would come in, if we wanted to survey that land or have an expert really take a look at it, that allows us to say, all right, Kinderborn, you need to pay for 
for an independent expert to do this work for us because we don't have expertise ourselves. It's a tough one because if we could get that included, then you know you don't need to ask the town to do to pay for all the survey work in advance. But my but understanding is that it's only related um, if they filed under the wetlands protection Correct. or yeah. under a bylaw. So, so it wouldn't happen until you were at that late stage. You know, that's right the now. problem is that it just didn't work up time wise. Like you couldn't you couldn't see if that's going to come into place before having to decide if we're going to hire somebody professionally to really survey the area. Um, so that kind of questions back with them. You know, do do you want to come up with the money for this? I mean, it wouldn't hurt us if we have the survey. You know, in the future, it would help us with this and just to to survey our lands is always great whenever we have that chance. One well, thing we did it uh, beforehand. So we, well, and you don't hiring, mean survey by not so much maps, survey, but um, you know, what are the what are the wild <laughs> things? Uh, what are the wetland resource areas? Yeah, inventory. Thank you. Yeah. 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 That's exactly yeah. what we're talking about. Is to hire you know a professional known firm to yeah. actually yeah. come in and do that inventory. Yeah. Um, it gives us a lot of ammunition at different points in the process. Mm. But there's an expense, and we really have to start moving on it. And, you know, now, in, in terms of reporting, what actually happened at the cyclist meeting, Brian made these cases, and then uh, Larry uh, proceeded to read the statement that he prepared before hearing Brian, yes. uh, and then the cyclist voted on it and approved. What did they vote for? The, the, the resolution? Yeah, it's a non-binding resolution basically saying, we, you know, we don't want this, we don't, approve, we don't want other projects like this in the future. Um, very strongly worded, uh, you know, the same thing, this conservation land, people work really hard, it's kind of a Bolton character issue, community issue, we work really hard to get this land, and preserve this land, take care of this land, and now you just want to go through it. Um, you know, it was nice, like you said, it would have been nice to have seen it in advance and be able to comment on it and make it more of a community thing rather than a very quiet hush hush. Here it is. We're voting on it right now. But it was not constructed with input from. No, the not community. at all. It was not appreciated input. They didn't want to hear what the community had to say, or maybe they're afraid of what the community had to say. I don't know. It was well worded. I mean, it, it hit on a lot of the key points, but it wasn't really something we had any of the saying. And they wanted that done, gone before anybody could comment, which was a little disconcerting. Uh, but along those lines, it was the same thing, saying, "All right, we don't have to worry. You know, they're supposed to pre-file in two weeks, so." You know, we have a year or so before we're really going to have to deal with this, and it was like saying, no, no, no. Once once pre-filing starts, then we need to. We have to be on the process. Who's on the process? How are you on the process? Insisting that we can't, like saying, oh no, it's not until filing. You have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. Like no idea what's going on. Um, so that, that's just the only thing I'm nervous. I don't know how we follow this process. How we can compel the town to follow the process. Uh, it'll be interesting if I can get over there Thursday to see. They're going to try to sign. We actually have to sign up for a docket number, um, so you can follow it. But I believe you actually have to apply in advance if you're going to want to talk to any of the agencies uh, to argue. I mean, it's, it's not open to anybody. You actually have to apply and be considered. And I'm guessing if we apply, and I don't know if it's as a town or a town rep. I don't think it's a hard process to say, you know, as a town we want to go over sending a town representative. I think it's to stop every. Tom Dick and Harry, it's like I'm I'm opposed to frack gas. I wanna, you know, I wanna go make comments and talk for eight hours. They just want real stakeholders. But that big, you know, who's applying, how do we apply, who's you know, do, is it one representative? Are we sending three or four? Who are they? It's like I'm just picking near three or four representatives, because I'd like to vet the people and see what they plan to say. I'd like to see the speeches more than ten minutes before they make them. If we're gonna go talk to FERC, I don't I don't know what the process is and I don't know that there's an open yeah. anything about what the process will be. Um, I don't think it's unreasonable for when the town goes forward for an issue that crosses conservation jurisdiction to include a member of the, of the conservation. Well, maybe, no, it makes maybe, sense, but do we have to apply maybe, to that now? Um, do you want to put that in writing, a memo? Do you want to put a memo together Possibly. to sort of um, restate some of the comments that you brought up at the meeting, you know, that you want to fo have follow-up and response yeah. to, since you don't feel like it, you know, kind of, they had an agenda to move through and, you know, yeah. spoke and they had the resolution and so forth. I'm just nervous. Yeah, for us to say, you, if you want, I can try to put something in writing tomorrow and send it off to you. Right, because um, I agree with Carol that, that your comments were not the agenda item. 
no. have to have meetings. No. Okay. Well, Which I was kind of led to believe that they had wanted the commission to come back and talk with them to see if we were all on the same page. So I, if I misrepresented it to you guys, that's how I understood it. That's I don't think you did. I, I think in I think that was their original, uh, and I can't speak for them, but I think that may have been their original intent. But mm -hmm. in between, you know, they've gotten enough feedback from the town, a lot of feedback from the mm -hmm. town. Um, I know I shouldn't say no, but I think it's. It went through a number of iterations, what they passed, because I think they included some stuff that they might not have been comfortable including originally. Um, I don't know who they talked to. It's supposed to be open meetings, supposed to be public open meetings. I don't know why they made change. I don't know what changes were made. I don't know what was discussed. Mm -hmm. I just know what the final was. And it was very strongly worded. I mean, it was worded really well. It was strongly worded. It was easy to get behind because it said no. But I, there was, I think they missed an entire pillar. I mean, it's usually attacked on about four things, and we attack on three. Mm -hmm. So got, you know, I just didn't think they thought to put that in. But if you had asked, so if I had read this two hours ago, I would have talked to you about it. But and we didn't even get copies to read through. They read it off. You know, read it off right here. Do you remember all that? Any comments? What, wait, what was the second one? I don't know. Uh, it was a little frustrating, to say the least. But it was, you know, it was not. I, at the end of the day, it's basically it says no, we don't want this, and it's going forward. Um, but those are that was my takeaway. I was trying to figure out our first opportunity. Trying to think. Notes in Ted, preparation of EA upgrades. I think it's when they go to NEPA, which is fairly early in the process. FERC has to kick it to NEPA, the National Environment, Environment. Protection Agency. Right? No, it's um, National Environment and State. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, it, it, yeah. It's, right. It's NEPA. Um, they have to kick it to NEPA for NEPA to review it as well to look at basically things with conservation and going through wetlands. Um, and I think that's when our first thing to interject is. I could be but wrong. But you can't right. interject unless you're on the docket and you have the docket number. Right. So. Well, yeah. yeah. We'll follow it. But yeah, unless you, I think you need to be a registered complainant. Right. So I would put that in the in the in the memo. You know, okay. it's, it's part of the follow up. You know, we would like to know whether, you know, anybody from the selectmen's office is going to be, you know, registering this, you know, to be on the docket or whether. And whether there should be a committee of people who help to follow it, and if there is going to be one, the commission would really recommend there be someone from the commission, and maybe even somebody from the conservation trust. You know, I mean, that, whatever you want to say. But yeah. So you're going to take his memo and you're going to give it to the selectmen. Yeah, well, we'll work on it with them. The yeah, committee. well, we can kind of, and we okay. can send the, it around. The next so. step is to go back to the selectmen. Well, we would. I don't. We would send it to them, and we would say, you know, we'd like to have some response. We'd like to come to our meeting to discuss it, or you know, do you want to have us back at your meeting? Or I just. I don't know. Like I. I know what some of the steps are. I don't know how to take the steps. I know things are coming up, right. but I'm just yeah. not. Like I don't know if. I know I'm not on top of it. Right. I don't know if anybody's and on top of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You yeah, don't, don't want to start about. missing these. Um, but and I think that's it. I think we have a little time. I don't know if they pre-filed. They were supposed to pre-file last week. They have to they pre-file for their entire, this is their whole pipeline project. Even though it says pre-file, and usually by the time you file, it's all said and done, you know, for the most part. Because with the pre-filing, that's when they really got to go through and check a lot of the things. Um, there is a point to interject after the filing. Uh, yeah, third opportunity. And then there's, there's an intervention point at the end. Um, but that pre-filing process, I think, is start. I don't know if it started yet. Um, I have to follow that. I haven't seen anything come through with other people, like with the the, um, the citizens committee. That's you know that, that anything has come. And, They're pretty good. And it, me it, yeah, point. right. So I think if we if it had happened, I think we would know. But. I I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, um, but and you know and it goes back to that thing too. Where I think they're great. And I get a lot of good information from them, but we really should keep it very separate because mm -hmm. um, down the road that could really burn us mm -hmm. if we don't. So that's about all. I'm trying to think. Anything else? Uh, yeah, just asking for it to really kick it back to our local control. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a no for that, all the reasons they stated in that document. Other reasons on top for other people. But if that's not enough, it was just looking, talking to them about some of the things that we want to ask for. We think they should push for. It. That One thing that it. I was thinking about, and I don't know whether you um, agree, and if um, anybody else thinks it's a good idea or not, but. I thought maybe we should try to hold some walks over there. Oh, yeah, I imagine that was it. You know, because I think not everybody really knows the the value of that property. Yes. You know how how kind of remote 
piece of bolt that it is and you know how these parcels all sort of come together and you know what's being used there with trail systems now and with vertical pool protection and you know all of that. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And also do you think, I hate to put more work on myself, but do you think <laughs> There would, be, there would be any value to trying to do a, a fall certification of the remaining two pools? I don't know. I've never done a fall certification. I don't even know. That would be a question for the heritage program. I don't know. See if there's any value. Or, well, I just. Why did we, well, I guess. I mean, in terms of this. Like in, well, I guess I just mean um, that if they were going to try to ramp up and do the certification for us, and yeah. so in, in the question was would there be a value to getting those done? What do, what do we think the time scale like? If it got to the point where we were, they were working with us and we were writing an order of conditions, do we have any rough idea when that would be? So, well, the first process. Did we have any time frame on that? I can't remember. No, I mean, there. So they uh, they yeah, want to be under construction. Time. I can't remember. If, and I didn't bring my file. They want to be under construction in 2018. Yeah. Right. So you're talking for not quite four years. Right? So we yeah. probably wouldn't be talking about a local permit with them for a while. Okay. So then I don't, I, I think that vernal pool information coming back in months is fine, right? Yeah. Because that's the only way it's going to be useful is writing an order of consistent use of herbicides. Well, so yes, yes, and no, I mean, so long as um, we feel like we have enough to bring to the, to the table with FERC to say that there are these potential other two vernal pools. You know, they're not certified at this point, yeah. but this is what we have our information on them. So, and when would that meeting it be? Would, it first? would be with, well, I, I would, would imagine next, it would it be would with NEPA, is who would report that out to, yeah, uh, for an pool information. And that's one of the first things. That's early. Yeah, and It'll you know, when I say months. for, I don't, it's not like they're going to pre-file tomorrow, it's the next day. Like, you know, I yeah. think these things take a few days or a week, but that's one of the first things after they pre-file, so it gets kicked over to, uh, to that NEPA. That would be this fall, this thing. Sounds like case pre filing, yeah, 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 with work. It automatically, by pre filing, it automatically a trigger review of the project under National Environmental Policy Act. Oh, here it is. We knew it was somewhere. Um, and then they look for public comment and interest. Um, and I think that's where it begins where you need to be. And again, I'm getting some of this from the NOFRAC gas people on some of their online sites. Not so much their online sites, but other online sites. You know, I can't 100% say that's true. But um, they do say that you do need to register, which I can see because, like I said, you don't need 8,000 coops. I don't want to say coops, but you know, 15,000 people want to all reiterate the same thing. Like you actually want, right. you know, people who are affected by this, and you know, our community, or actually have some say. So I can see that you would need to pre-register. Mm -hmm. um, but let's see if I can track the rest of that down tomorrow. I see how we do that. Um, but yeah, that was one of the. So how about, the, about our, our potential volunteers here? Anything? Want to recap? <laughs> it's normally much more fun and exciting than this. <laughs> and normally we have cocktails. Do you guys have any questions? <laughs> really? Comments? Might just run away. <laughs> so John, you weren't in when we first introduced everyone. Yeah, sorry, I was um, late. That's okay. I was just saying. So we have two vacancies on the commission, and um, we are looking. For to fill those as quickly as we can because we've had um, some troubles trying to make sure we have our quorums and stuff. And um, and then we also have had people as associate members. So if you feel like it's not something you're ready to jump in and be voting on a project, which, you know, in the next couple of weeks we don't have anything new that's been filed yet, you know, so there's nothing that's a new thing that's coming down the pipe that I'm quite aware of, although I did hear about a potential wetland violation today. That, um, is on the Stowe Bolton line. And definitely, they think there was a violation in Stowe, but they weren't sure whether or not it, it came into Bolton or not. So I have to look at that tomorrow. But anyway, um, you know, as, as an associate member, you, you can st just sort of Tell work in the guide, work you know, by sitting at the table a little bit, listening to the projects, putting in your two cents, but not actually voting. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm like totally new to all of this, so you know, I'm sort of here to learn, and you know, I'm just kind of an outdoorsy guy and. You know, so I'd be here for any kind of manual labor that needs to get done and also just kind of learn the whole process and, you know, learn the bylaws and how it goes and okay. the okay. resident and all that stuff. So I'm just... We also, um, I formed like a, a working trail committee group that right now has met a few times during the summer and so we're trying to get that 
a little bit more um, established and trying to get projects in the field done. So mm -hmm. that, that's something that the commission, because we often end up with a lot of these wetland type of hearings that take us until nine or whenever, and then everyone's kind of beat up and doesn't want to stay too much longer <laughs> for you know more of the fun stuff. <laughs> you know, but um, we decided we'd try to work with a, another group of people who um, would occasionally report back to the commission. And um, so that might be something that you also find interesting. Yeah, sure, definitely. Okay. Would the associates um, be in addition to the two members? So, I mean, there's yeah. four of us here. If there were two that wanted to become members, the other two would be able to be associates as well. Correct. Right. Yeah. Right. Wait, there's no, one, there's, there's no, no real limit on, limit on associates. Um, because they're not voting. Right. And, and it's not a true associate, like, um, it's, a, it's a true associate, but it's not like a substitute. Like on the planning board, they can actually have yeah. substitute members who are, they call them associates as well, and mm -hmm. they can sit in and vote in place of somebody else. I'm not quite sure how that works, out, honestly, but they do have yeah, associate members that can vote. But um, we don't, we, the way the, um, the Conservation Commission Act was established, that isn't something that we can do. Yeah. One other question, so there's a two year and a three year term, um, and the expectation is that you serve the whole term, obviously. What about, you know, number of missed meetings or something like that? Um, is there a mm -hmm. So there's not, I think the selectmen actually may have something about missed meetings. Um, it's never really become an, an issue for us, except that, so we have one member who's not here right now, and, and we I sort, of, sort of say that she's on sabbatical. So she's been our longest term member. Lori. I've been Lori yeah. Stevenson, so her family owns Bolton Spring Farm. She is a farmer from dawn to dusk this time of year, and she just can't do the meetings and keep up on the business. And so I've been working here 14 years. She was on the commission before I started. So it's been great to have the historical knowledge and experience that she's been able to bring. So anyway, every late summer and fall, she takes off some time, and it's never been an issue that anyone's raised. But the issue that comes up with missing meetings is not so much um, how many during those, those two years or three years you're on, but you can only miss, um, what is it, one meeting? You, have, you can only miss like one meeting to be able to vote on a project. And so and if you miss that meeting, you have to um, review the minutes or and or the audio tape or on that video project, on that, that project, project right. to be able to be able to vote. So like right now with only four members able to be present, if they miss something, you know, and like like um, some of the projects, like the first one we had on uh, Rising Tides was the name of that one, that, that new house, that was filed in June, you know, and bec in part because of the timing of our meetings and in part um, because of the information that we request, you know, it extends out for a period of time. So it, there's more opportunity for missing meetings if things get extended. Mm -hmm. And oh, and Condine is another one. So Condine, I don't know when we started that one, but um, you know, it's been a long time. So again, it, because they've just continued, it hasn't been an issue. But if they, if we were still getting information and bits and drabs and it was going on for six months, you know, then it's it, that becomes a problem. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, I think everybody here has missed a meeting or two. I know, I know, I, I no, missed, all, I did one or two. Yeah, yeah. I, we, you know, it's just. It's not as critical when there are more of us, but we're at a critical Yeah, well, we had a full, it was like, it was like, Maria is now. So we can't miss. So basically, if, if, if someone is not going to be able to attend a meeting, we have postponed the meeting. Yeah. yeah. Which is why we only had one in June and July and August, and it looks like unless we get new members, we're only going to have one in October. And. What did we figure today? It looked like we had one in October, one in November, one in December at least, and maybe I think. But it, it you know, and there, again, it's a little bit quieter as far as new applications. But there is other work, and there is other business that we could take up. You know, there is other management stuff, or you know, that maybe there's other land acquisition that somebody can you know bring to the table that we could work on. You know, that um, that we just you know, it's hard with just the, the mm -hmm. land number. Mm -hmm. uh, still that open space plan that's fitting in the... Yeah, we, still, we have an open space and recreation <laughs> plan that we keep um, years of trying years. to revive because if we ever wanted to get money from the state for land acquisition, um, you have to have an open space, a current open space and recreation plan. Which I did, I meant to send out when I sent you the drafts that I sent today, but the governor did pass another environmental bond bill, so there is money at the state for land protection. So... Mm -hmm. 
I mean, they have to always to vote it on an annual basis, but lots to do. We just don't have people to do it. I mean, we don't have people to do it. And then site walks, those are how, f what's the frequency these days of those? Maybe once a month on Sunday mornings usually. Sometimes yeah. some people um, have more time after work and during the week. When we, when we had more of a full uh, uh, committee too, we usually have two groups. It was usually a yeah. Sunday morning and maybe uh, oh, a yeah. Thursday night or, you know, a night. Maybe sometimes the carols around at night or either it was like three or four of us do a yeah. Tuesday night at six and a Sunday morning at night. during high summer when the mm. evenings are later. And yeah, you can get out there. Yeah. yeah. So one or two times a month, I think, and then there'd be several visits usually. Like if it's a Sunday morning, there might be two or three scheduled. Yeah. yeah. And going forward, the closer we get in the winter, the less productive the site walk becomes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But when well, the right. nation's involved, typically, <laughs> yeah. because yeah. it can be a process. It's like drive by, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But is, is the uh, yeah. less full in the winter because people are preparing for the spring and you said that this wasn't busy. This yeah. was not as this was this was sort of less busy than it's been, mm -hmm. but um, maybe a little bit more on the average size size of the agenda. Um, it depends. You know, sometimes people will do their applications in the winter because they want to prepare and get everything ready for the spring. Mm -hmm. I think it seems like the last few years the spring's been the busiest. The spring through the summer. And, and it may just be because of some of the projects that we have going on, like there is the big subdivision that's going on, so there's a lot of sort of related work to that. And then we have the Town Conservation Commission has their own project going on this summer, so the Fifeshire Dam lowering that project, and so we had to have that contracted out. And so, you know, I've been trying to update everybody on that, but in the spring we were preparing for that. And, and actually, in the winter, I think we were, you know, so there's some projects that come in in the winter as well. well. And I think what really impacts how busy the meeting is, how long it is, how many things are on the agenda, is how frequently we're meeting. Like when we don't have enough people to reach a quorum, so we're only meeting once a month these days, and then so much piles up. But when we can meet twice a month, it tends to be a lot more manageable. I prefer it that way. I'd rather have more shorter meetings yeah. than ones where we're here till 11. It's horrible. That never happens. We're never here to laugh. Oh, yeah, never, never happens. Usually we're here to laugh. Who would just say the usual kind of time commitment is outside of the meetings, just generally? You know, it's mainly the site visits, which, you know, yeah. you know say that's two hours a month, maybe. Uh, and then if you're working on the chance that's time on the open space and recreation plan, I tend to go to all the pipeline meetings. Jim tends to go to a lot of the Century Mill walkthroughs. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you take on a project or an aspect, it pulls. can be more. Yeah. So there's yeah. always, yeah. There's always right. like a pull to do more, but they, for the minimum, you could you could just come to the Tuesday night meetings and do the site site visits. It's possible yeah. to do that. Well, that yes. being said, there's also a learning curve at the beginning. Yes. Where I have spent, uh, I've gone to a couple of of conferences where there'd be holiday training sessions from mm -hmm. nine to four out in uh, Boxborough where they'll, they'll have a classroom session in the morning and go out to a site and you'll actually dig up soil and look at the hydrology. Uh, mm -hmm. And then that, there's a conference where there are a number of different sessions all day. Uh, and until you get ramped up on, on, on these basics, uh, they can be a fair amount of, of time and yeah. they have They have online courses for some of the basics, for a lot of the basics. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's okay. I, you know, I've got an infant at home, so, you know, my wife and I both work a lot too, so we're trying to just trying to figure out if it'll actually work with us, you know. But so you, I'm sure you heard some terms that, that we threw around that right. aren't, aren't familiar with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we don't really understand either. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to know what happens. So at least we can do that. Yeah. It, it comes pretty quick. Mm -hmm. But it, so the other thing, so if you feel like you're not sure yet, you know that it, I I was telling everybody come to the meetings and see, you know, because even and Karen's come to a few meetings through the summer, but um, you know you can just come to the meetings anyway as long as you feel it, until you feel like you're ready. You know, we are encouraging people because we really do want some new volunteers, and we think it's as Jan says, it's more efficient to have the, the multiple meetings and get the jobs you know done by more people. We the commission twice tried to get the number of members reduced to five because of some of the problems we were having with quorums. But the town meeting has not approved that. And I think, you know, rightly so, people feel as though you need, you know, people who are making these decisions, they, you need a big group of people to both handle the work and make a good, you know, decision about, you know, what, whether, what you're approving and what you're not approving and stuff. Um, so, 
you know, we, we've tried to reduce it, it didn't work, you know, so we really need to fill the positions and, you know, but if you can't, you can, you, we don't want people who are not comfortable and are not sure what they're voting on either, you know, so you, uh, on the other hand, none of us were sure when we were, I mean, it's true. Yeah, 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 yeah we still want to. <laughs> yeah, you still want to. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> we, we, have, we have had some turnover too, yeah. and having a larger group helps preserve, uh, yeah. uh, you know, ongoing functioning. Yeah. So, there, and there's always more, as Janet said. I mean, you know, we, Janet's taken on, um, last year, she did a lot of walks, like, um, you know, on, we did weekday, Thursday morning walks, and again, trying to get people out on the conservation land, you know, and trying to introduce them to different properties. Um, so, you know, there's stuff that, if you have an interest, you know, you can also bring to the table. And, um, that helps build the program even more. That, all, all, all that uh, being said, if you're relatively new to the town, are, are, are any of you? Well, John said he was pretty new, right? Yeah, not, not so new. Yeah, I just moved here. Yeah. Like, I moved here in June. So. Oh, okay. Very new. <laughs> so, I, I'm fairly new. I, I will, I'll be in here five years in, in, well, no, in November. Well, that's new. It's <laughs> 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 about that new. And I, I don't have kids in the school system. And one of the things that this does for me is we go around town and we we, uh, we visit different sites and we meet people working in different places and we meet other boards and the people from town who are on there. Is it's a way to get to know people in places in the town and get involved with what's going on mm -hmm. to an extent that I really couldn't do any other way. And I, I, I find that very, very valuable. Uh, I've always lived in, in larger municipalities the smallest being 35,000 people, um, and and this is really quite uh, quite interesting. So I would encourage you, if you have other questions, to let me know or to you know contact the commission members okay. directly if you want to get more of a commission perspective because they definitely have a different perspective than I do. Of, you know, the work. <laughs> I get paid for it. So. <laughs> they are open public meetings too, so you know if we're talking about something, feel free to ask questions. Mm -hmm. They are, you know, it's it's not like uh, it's not we're the only people who have a right to question what they're doing. Um, the public that's the reason why it has to be done here, and that's why we have to wait for the times. Is so anybody who wants to stop in can comment or question or say why is that or how is that. Mm -hmm. So feel free to attend, question, yell. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Mm -hmm. So the next meeting, September 30th. September 30th, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we, we often have been meeting over in the Houghton Building, which is um, a couple doors down. Mm -hmm. This summer we were asked, um, just for uh, um, videotaping, it was easier for them to have us meeting over here. But with the full quorum, you know, we probably would go back over there anyway because um, you can't talk to the table. It's, it's got more room. Is that the building with the bolt and access television? Yes. yes. That's yes. where I was at first. Uh, I came over here. Yes. What, what would yeah. they be? I saw a meeting there tonight because I, I had to do a double take. I was like, wait, where is it? I didn't, I didn't go in. I oh, sat okay. in the parking lot and I punched into my GPS and I was like, oh, down the street, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we do it one sometimes too. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just wasn't sure which one Town Hall was, honestly. Yeah. Well, I, I believe the September 30th meeting is going to be here again, but I think we were moving back over in October. Can you back to public safety? I like the public safety building. Well, that was hard to get on Tuesday open, night. Comfy. Yeah, that, that is not it. And I could walk. That's just the I could walk down here with my big hair. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thanks for the help. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we paused? I just came back from the White House. The work that you guys are doing. In the Capitol, on the side of the gallery. It's pretty cool. Which is kind of surprising to me after your comments because it sounded like I mean they were touting and it was really interesting for him, but he's not really that involved in the process. Yes, which I didn't take from